Hello everyone, Mecha here, and welcome to a Fire Emblem 4 speedrun. That's right, Fire Emblem Genealogy The Holy War took me like 20-something episodes of an hour plus each, but here you're gonna see it in less than three hours. The whole run is like four hours long and was authored by Kirby Master, who is here on the mic with me. How are you doing, Kirby? Hi, I'm doing all right. Uh, I learned this game like about a year ago, and um, this the actual run is about three hours, 51 seconds. Um, but I also uploaded, which is what you're seeing right now, a version that is sped up for some of the enemy phases and stuff, just so it's more bearable to watch and stuff. Um, because it's genealogy to Holy War. That's just how it is. So you're going to see about two and a half hours of fun gameplay instead of four hours of an extra hour and a half of really slow enemy red phases, green phases, yellow phases stuff. Which I don't think anyone wants to see that even be even slower. Yeah, that's probably the main thing people will mention when they talk about genealogy the whole world that they don't like. One of them is the map size, I guess, and the other one is, you know, the map animations take take a long time. But that's that's fast enough, so that's good. We can focus on the mm -hmm. parts that are interesting. I think the most interesting part of this speedrun for me is the route you take, like how you go about minimizing all the things you don't want to see in speedrun, like long animations, lots of enemies moving, brigands burning down villages, mm -hmm. stuff like that. We just it's funny you bring that up because the um, brigands burning out villages is like the worst enemy of the speedrun. Because <laughs> I think like each burning animation is like four and a half to five seconds each, and so if you let a brigand like burn down a village entirely, that's times ten per village. So like, if you don't block or kill brigands burning villages and and you let them burn it all the way down by ignoring it, that's almost an entire minute of time loss per village, which is why you're seeing us kind of go out of the way to kill these brigands with Azel and Noish. Yeah, I was um, fortunately getting like a double a cost proc on the first guy. Yeah, yeah. So as a disclaimer, I I did like add some a little bit of text at the bottom um, because this is being ran on a Japanese Nintendo Switch Online version on my Switch, um, and it's in Japanese, so it's kind of hard to read some of the text going on, especially if you're not familiar with all the icons. So when editing this sped up version of the speedrun, and you probably saw it already, but I added some text bits at the bottom of the screen here and there just to kind of sh say briefly explain some things and what's going on such as noise getting like three across procs there um this run entire run is rng manipulated and i did not route this although i did make some updates and improvements to it um the core route was made by this per japanese person on nico video named tasan 11115 i don't ha i don't think it's there anymore unfortunately but i just wanted to make that clear that i did not route this um Tassan, this Japanese Tasser, made this route. Um, Ghost Wheel transcribed it into a RTA setting. And then Mute Muso all then improved that run with her execution. And then I improved on top of her run last year, which is the run that you see here. And this entire run is RNG manipulated, just like the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblems. But the problem is there's no cursor wiggling. So, like, the casual way to get different the different RNG seeds is to spam the arena. What arena? I don't see an arena. Yeah, yeah, we, we kind of don't want to do that. So we like the, the route has to like hope everything lines up perfectly and or like slightly change your unit ordering just to ho hope that things line up nicely. Hope um, there's like or maybe, a seed yeah. you can use that's like reasonably available without arena, right? Yeah, basically. Um, and like the, the ridiculous means we have to go through to RN burn later on while avoiding the arena, you'll you'll get to see that later on. But and it's very, very obvious. But like I think with the other things that we've commentated on for my speedruns, there's usually tends to be like a common theme. Like for FE6, this boss sucks. Uh <laughs> for this game it's gonna be it's probably gonna be either Brigands burning villages sucks or burning RNs sucks. Mm -hmm. Or both. Yeah. <laughs> so that's gonna be the general theme. I, I know from like trying to play this game faster every once in a while that Sigurd, while he is known as like the best unit in the entire series, he is not completely invincible. If you try to stomp him with Nick, if you try to stomp the entire prologue with him, he'll get hit sometimes because there's just so many enemies that a 30 will eventually connect. And for example, mm -hmm. this boss area here with all these brigands and the boss that he has like two round, there's like a reasonable chance to die even with your sword out. And he also doesn't two shot these brigands uh, unless he gets two strength procs, I think. Yeah, the, his level ups have basically been perfect, including resistance, which is like a 5% growth, something really low like that. So, like, again, he Sigur kind of needs to get, like, almost perfect level ups everywhere, especially resistance, which is pretty relevant in Chapter 2. Um, it, this is the original Japanese version on emulated on Switch, so if you see a MDF level, that is resistance or magic defense, which took me a while to get used to because I originally played this game on an English, English patch. Yeah, the Project Naga patch. 
Mm -hmm. I think I used to be able to get around that problem with using the Iron Lance against some of the Brigands, but then you're just really getting hit every time. <laughs> so you're just going to get hit, hit everywhere, yeah. Um, I haven't tried this myself, but I remember like when you did your tier list review with Pala Emblem or Valk, um, that Lances were like the kind of a big meta, especially for Sigurd because of their higher might and Javelins. Um, and this speedrun will not use Lances at all on Sigurd. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I mean, if you can rig him to kill with swords instead, that is, uh, first of all, it's much better in this chapter because you just have such better uh, chances mm -hmm. of dodging everything. And speed ring, I remember if you get the speed ring, some enemies just stop attacking you uh, if you're on terrain because they have this zero hit. Yeah, and that is taken advantage of in some some cases. So we just really want as much avoid as possible on Sigurd to the point where enemies will just ignore him because animations are slow. It's not Path of Radiance, but animations are still slow. And like Sigurd has a lot, as you mentioned, Sigurd has a lot of trouble killing this boss. So we kind of are bottlenecked by waiting for Quan to catch up a bit and to chip and we'll get the kill. And then Sigurd can go ahead and capture the castle. Oh, but couldn't he capture anyway by just attacking again next turn and then see? I think we need the speed ring. We wanted to prioritize getting the speed ring and also avoid more burning animations. Because uh, so, I also I think like if we ca had him capture, he'd face more brigand attacks there too. Oh, I guess you get to kill this hunter now instead. Because you could just use this, this turn to kill the boss, right? And yeah, we just... probably could have used the turn to kill the boss, but... I didn't route this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's I, probably I don't a very how, good reason for it. I don't know how the RNG lines out. It's just... I, uh, the Quan attack is like very nice looking, of course. I was just wondering if there was like a specific mm -hmm. reason for all this. Yeah, like, I imagine if we try to capture immediately, Sigurd would fight all those brigands, and we probably don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. so. It kind of depends what to do. It's like one of those rare cases in FE4 where the enemies do not vanish me. I mean, you get the Nightwreck Castle because they are affiliated with the last castle, not the first one. Yeah, and that uh, we usually want to capture ASAP because of that, where we just make all the enemies disappear because that's fast. Mm -hmm. It's probably the strongest move in Fireman when you think about it, even stronger than turn. It's just capture yeah, castle I... enemies, just 50. <laughs> what, what move in Fireman kills multiple enemies at once? There's not many of those. Oh, yeah, Azel's pretty useful, by the way. He's making his long trek over to a burning village in the upper left corner. That is his entire role in the speedrun. Azel has been clutching it. He uh, he dodged a couple fail hits earlier. He did. <laughs> pretty OP guy. Mm -hmm. I rigged the depth proc on Quan to kill one more brigands. Very nice. If Finn's going to play a pretty important role for some chapters, because he's pretty much going to be like our secondary training project. Um, because, like, problem with having it one carry is they can't do everything at once and this is a game where sometimes you need to kind of go around the map a lot so having like a secondary crane combat unit like Fen is pretty nice i mean you just said secret is not allowed to use lances anymore so i guess it's got yeah. to use the brave lance <laughs> we, we, we gotta have lance. a brave lance user right uh-huh i mean unironically it's it's a pretty good tool secret's strongest weapon for a while is probably the silver sword he gets from arvis i don't even know if you uh, get that yeah, now we're going to get it. It's going to be the main weapon. So, like, Sigurd's problem, I guess, in the rigged setting is he doesn't have anything to rig. <laughs> so, like, he just has to bungle his raw stats, which works later on. You mean especially like, once he doesn't have crits and or cost or anything like that, right? He yeah. has no skill procs. He has no crit. Nothing like that, at least mm -hmm. for the early game. So, like, he just has to get through with mm -hmm. having getting some help from Finn or Quan or hoping Ethlin keeps up and trying to rig a sibling crit because that's the only thing we can rig, really. But otherwise, he just has to get through with raw stats. Yeah, which in prologue with just those strength procs, I think he gets pretty much everything that matters. But mm -hmm. enemies soon get a lot more HP. Yeah, he, like I, I believe he doesn't want around KO the final castle boss here. So yeah, no, but that guy is like hella tough. <laughs> that guy He's is really impossible. Yeah. To kill. But this is a nice workaround, though. I'm assuming that these enemies will move towards the nearest player unit at all, at all times, or the castle that they can think they can seize. Yeah, they're gonna go after the castle. So uh, rip the castle because they're gonna capture it. Mm hmm. I mean, it's not a ranked one. We don't have to worry about castles getting captured. Is that part of rank? I don't remember. I know you get money from it. Yeah, it's it's part of rank. I, okay. It's it's one of the rankings. I forgot which it is. Oh, so gotcha. Really should do a rank playthrough at some point. <laughs> if one Maybe not. Plan for some people, depending on depending on what you're into. But obviously, a very different uh, category. At one point, what we need is a ranked speedrun. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> I will not route that. It's definitely not going to uh, take forever. I hope you enjoy nope. the area animations. So that fin attack um, <clears throat> was not necessary at all, but it's just to burn our ends. That's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and after this turn, you'll see how Finn gets to Bunga a little bit coming up. Also, nice resistance level on Sigurd. 
Yeah, whenever a Finn gets to somewhat low HP, I'm always like, oh, is this a Semiracle strat coming up? Yeah, because, like, again, the Burning RNs just really sucks in this game, so you kind of have to get through with, like, stuff that is reliable enough, even if it seems slightly slow, because, like, you just don't have easy ways to burn, like, one or two random numbers in this game. You just don't. So, not without affecting, like, the actual strat. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess this baits the enemies away from Sigurd? Interesting. One HP Finn. But the enemies are all, like, <laughs> congregating around a broken castle for some reason. I guess they're just programmed to go after castles regardless of what, what their status is. That's so Yeah, weird. that's what I'm guessing. But yeah, uh, not killing stuff is fast, and Finn is great for that. Yeah. And as a reminder, what Miracle does is, I think during the round of combat, you go below 11 HP, you get 10 avoid per HP below 11. So if you hit 1 HP, you get plus 100 avoid. Yeah, and it lasts Which throughout the rest funny. of the phase. Yep. Turn, I think. If you, Which if it's player is fantastic. Phases, I think it's, if you get it up during play phase, I'm pretty sure it lasts through enemy phase as well. I don't know, honestly. I, I never 100% understood when Miracle works or it doesn't, really, mm -hmm. besides like the HP benchmark. If you stay alive, it worked. Yep. <laughs> Alright, prologue. That was a pretty fast prologue. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it was sped up a little bit, but 10 minutes is pretty damn fast. I think the, the first castle alone in my last playthrough took me, what, like an hour by itself? But that's just because yeah. everyone had <laughs> trash move. Uh, I think... Uh, let me see, I'm curious now how long it actually takes. I think it's like a 20 minute... The prologue takes about 50 to 20 minutes, actually. Mm -hmm. It's mostly time. down to execution, right? Because the combat will be the it's same almost every time. All of, It's all execution, right? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, so it's a little bit of armory around. management. Yep. And we, we want Finn to bunga a little bit. So, mm -hmm. well, not in this chapter, but you want him set up. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you might as well do all the castle preparations you can at once, right? Because that way you save menuing. Yep. You want to minimize your castle um, yeah. inventory management. And Finn, I think, has more issues two, sh two shotting enemies, whereas Quan with iron will still two shot enemies. So, trading the iron for the steel is always a good move there. Mm -hmm. But he has to add up as well, which uh, you can rig, but eh, you really want to avoid it if you can. Yeah, I guess you would always want to adapt if you can, because you don't want to take multiple rounds to do something, but sometimes yeah. it is what it is, I guess. I think Finn typically just does a lot more work than Quan, just yeah. because like, Quan just can't one round without adapt. Yeah, but Finn can with the Brave Lands. Well, like last... Quan can too, but yeah. I think like last chapter was that thing on the castle, Finn can't do that because the enemy he didn't have enough move to do when he was further back than Quan. So mm -hmm. it had to be him. Also, he has a Javelin, Finn doesn't start with one. Oh yeah, I forgot about that too. Yeah, so, it I, I casually I always found it annoying that do no one would ever attack do in the forest, <laughs> but it's really nice here because it just means enemies don't move. You just congregate around do, which is really funny. Yeah, and I guess doesn't he get wrecked by the captain at some point? I, I forgot. Not in the speed run. I, think... I don't remember if the captain wanted kills him casually. He does. Okay. I've seen it a couple times. I. I think if the if the generic brigands move first, then there should be no problem because he just gets surrounded. But then the rest keeps moving, so I don't know how you can solve that. And kill burning brigands with Sigurd for a change because the guy is like right on your path. I'm guessing Sigurd is going to go around the left side of this little forest area, and Quan and Finn are trying to sneak around the right side. I believe so. I think you know. I think he goes goes to the side. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna bump right in. I mean, you got to balance yeah. getting XP against avoiding battle animations, I guess. Mm -hmm. Quan and Finn and Ethlin are going to be baits as well, just to bait some of the enemies away. I think Sigurd has so much avoid they're going to ignore him, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The Axe guys should. Maybe the boss will go for him. And with all these ranged enemies attacking Sigurd, I'm guessing he's going to whip out his Silver Axe, too. Or not. Oh, oh, he's oh I guess he just has so much avoid. Yeah. <laughs> Speed ring OP. Hand Axe has, like, no hit. You'd think Silver Axe is enough to get some... Does it even have that much hit? I don't remember. It has the same hit as iron and steel. I don't remember how much. I want to say it's like 70 or 80 base. But Because I, I I think like iron, steel, silver weapons all have like the same hit, they don't do. they? They just have more might. Yes. At the very least, the uh, weapons do. I think the... Obviously, there's some difference between like <laughs> killer bow and the normal bows. And, oh, uh, yeah. The brave sword has 20 more hit. And then and I think the tomes have less hit too, but I don't quote me on that. Oh no, our oh. castle's gonna get captured. Why do these guys attack at close range sometimes? It's so weird. I know they have hand axes. I, I don't know. I think this is on like casual, well, not casual, but the s not stupid AI. <laughs> the what stupid do you mean AI. Not stupid. All the AI in this game is stupid. <laughs> the non clever AI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you even have that unlocked on this save? Do you have to start from a clean save? I do. I do have it unlocked, uh -huh. yeah. 
I think I think like after the credits, it shows you how many times you've cleared the game. It's oh. like fifteen or something like that mm -hmm. on, on my file. Is I run Range of Secret right now? She uh, no, I don't think so. She's I think she's like one dial away. Roads, but maybe. Or she might just ignore him. Oh, I know she doesn't attack him. I mean, it would be very annoying if she like stood on the like how you got a seize from. So I'm assuming. Yeah, no, she does not block it. I I could swear she's in range. She looks like she's in range, but it's going a little too fast. I can't tell. <laughs> oh, just she runs away. Out of speed run. Just do times three speed. Yeah, you're kind of seeing an example of how much Sigurd quote quote struggles to kill bosses due to his lack of being able to rig anything. So he just has to go for a raw to a KO. But I mean, yeah. it works out. But this still far, far outperforms like every other unit besides maybe like Quan hitting twice with steel. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like a Noish for doing like three damage a piece to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know who they are. Oh, actually, Alec does one more thing in this run. You'll see later. But Noish is done. No. I I'm a oh, big yep. Noish fan. He was fine. Yep. All good. Conga line. Oh, okay. I think this is. I think um, the next yellow phase coming up is where I literally take a bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my first of like four designated bathroom breaks. So Speed bathroom full practice. Dis <laughs> full transparency. Um. Um. We we do use um turbo for this game because uh screw mashing all the way through these long enemy phases and stuff like that. Um, it depends on the game whether it's allowed or not, but. Mute, mute used it for her run, and I'm like, yeah, I'll use it for this run, too. So, like, for some, a lot of the enemy faces, you don't really need to mash, per se, but there are, like, cutscenes that you want to press start through, but you kind of don't want to care about that for, like, four or five minute long enemy phases, just because screw that, and hand health is important, too. So you're turboing, so, turboing Aiden. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm turboing start in this case. I have a... My controller has, like, a turbo toggle where I just... If I press X, it automatically turbos the start button for me, and I just leave it alone and you use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't blame you. It's a long run. This is not even like that far in, but you got to take these breaks when you can, because the next opportunity has to be like turbo four or something. Yeah, it, it kind of comes out at the downside or upside, depending on how you want to see it. With like, if you allow turbo, you also allow using it for like a lot of menus. So like, if you pay attention to how quickly I do some of the castle management, for example, I like mash incredibly quickly, and that's because I'm using Tarpa for those functions. It's so, like press A three times really quickly, for example. It so. just looks smooth. This game is slow enough as it is. If you want this game to see to see phone play the game slowly, there's plenty of other <laughs> places you could do so. Yeah. Do you like? But yeah, every you... game is different, though. Don't you love how you cannot uh, can't though after talking to someone? It's like the one action uh, completely exhausts Sigurd. It's it's so it annoys me so much. <laughs> uh. Oh boy. He's stuck talking to Ira for a turn. I guess you don't have to recruit her, but I think we we, we get the brave sword. Oh, true. the brave sword is pretty important for that a chapter recruit, I think. Yeah, that's that's one hell of a boss killing sword. You can't leave that on the table. Mm -hmm. Like I think we use it just for chapter three, and that's it. And then at that point, the silver sword's like built up enough crit that we can just use it to pierce anything we need to. I was gonna be kind of surprised that it takes till chapter three, but then I remember you usually try not to kill enemies. <laughs> yeah, we we avoid killing stuff if we can. It does hit, it hits like I think 90 ish kills by the end of the run, something like that. Mm hmm. That's surprising because I remember. So, it, oh, dude, was that a miss input on Ethan? Oh my god, reset the run. Oh gosh, missed one input. <laughs> yeah, so that's the nice thing. Um, Like, because if you miss move a unit, as long as you haven't committed to it, your run's not over because mm -hmm. there's no orange, orange burned when you do that. You can just cancel and do it again. So mm -hmm. that's nice. The bad yeah. news is if you make a single mistake anywhere in this four hour run, your run's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh,. Just be good, get good. <laughs> Simply improv once it happens. Yeah. PB anyway. What I used to do on my first few runs was like, it's obviously not realistic for me to play this perfectly in my first, like, when I'm just starting out. So, like, I did the Switch emulator, does have like a rewind function. Oh, yeah. So, like, I used that for like my for every run I did. But obviously, if I used it, it would invalidate it, but I'd still use it to finish the run as practice, basically. Yeah, do a no, re no reset run, basically. Basically, yeah, because like, you. It's, it's, it's just good to finish runs. And it's also nice to have this as a tool because it means, like, if someone ever submitted us for marathons, it means it's more marathon safe because. Oh, yeah. To reset an entire four hour run is kind of terrible for marathons. Yeah, it's kind of nice in that way that I think it's Nintendo Switch Online that just puts rewind on everything. Yeah, you have rewind at everything. Um, if you look at this bottom right corner of the screen, that's ZL plus ZR. That's like a. Like, that's like an emulator. What's it called? 
menu yeah. shortcut that you can use. And if you hold it, you can rewind it on the fly, which is really nice. Shouts to Ardeen for enemy phasing. Yeah, I think that's literally to like move an archer out of the way so Sigurd's path is still clear, because I think that archer would attack it from the left. Yeah, and the force Block is Sigurd. also in the way, yeah. So yeah. So clear. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, uh, you know what's coming. <laughs> I see Ethlyn move and do absolutely nothing. I know what's happening. <laughs> uh, bless you, Ethlyn, so much. We kind of need to lug her around anyways, because I think she and I, after this castle, she and I didn't have a talk conversation for the return stuff. Yeah. And while Dew has a conversation with Idean for the warp staff, I always mix those two up. I think it's Dew Idean for the warp staff. You are correct. And those are both very important for obvious reasons. Yeah, I mean, you, you, can't, can't, you can't like warp skip in this game, but if you, anytime you can warp secret from one castle to the next, that's like 50,000 moves you're saving. Yeah, if we do it like it's really for the actual warp pur purposes, it's used, I think, twice in chapter three, because that is one of those maps where you kind of go back and forth a lot. Um, and I think we use it once in Chapter 6, and that's it. All other warp pieces were, is for experience grinding. Oh god, we got a grind ID. <laughs> Come on, can you just use Claude? Uh, I know you need your rank staffs, but come on, just use Claude. He's right there. We'll see, I guess we'll see why that cannot be done, but uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna see ID in a lot of a lot of ID. We're, 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 we're gonna castle. see a lot of ID. Oh no. Oh well, it's bringing time. So this is when I would be like, this is when I would be worried about the speed ring on Sigurd because the enemies will not attack him with block a choke point. But I'm guessing he's still carrying uh, some lances around. I think we like use. I think I think we try to like have them avoid enemy phasing as much as possible, in this case, um, because brigands are just in really awkward spots. Mm -hmm. uh, we do use Finn, Jamka, and I think Quan to help clear out some of the bandits because we kind of want to kill them all at some point. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna get really crowded here because it's you know the funny forest. It's certainly funny. Jamka has such an annoying choke point here because it's never gonna be like. It's gonna take so long for Ardeen to get over there <laughs> and talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> With Ardeen's two move and Jamka's three. Yeah, this is this part right here is like one of the hardest parts of the speedrunner for me to learn because there's just no good, clear pattern of how you move everyone. But it also still really matters where you move because you need to make sure the enemies move in the correct spots. And then Dew has to tag along because he has to talk to Ardeen. <laughs> yeah, he's just. <laughs> I do. How's it going? Stop! I want to give you a warp staff. Yeah, it looks like Sigurd's using the sword here. Mm -hmm. Give me a lance here, so he gets attacked once. Yeah. I, I, ima I imagine I didn't make any changes to this turn. It's, I imagine it's just for like if you want to burn different RNs, and we use a lance or sword depending on the situation. Yeah. Because that's mm -hmm. like one of our few tools for burning RNs to RNG manipulate. Reminds me of the FP7 rank run, where he like, would switch between swords and lances with Kent and Sane against brigands for no apparent reason, other than to burn our ends. Or get yeah, hit. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, okay, so they literally do nothing, but at least they're tempted to move out of the way for some reason. Like, they're not just trying to hug Sigurd. It's just, mm -hmm. it's so Nobody awkward. moves. Yep. It's so awkward when you're like... Oh, don't. No. You have to watch this next enemy phase. It's okay. pretty genius. Okay, all right. So Sigurd murders one guy on a, on a peak. Bigger peaks, big fence forests, and you think he just chokes the point again? Yeah, okay. All right. Actually, no, I think it's the enemy phase after that's genius, but you'll see. You'll see what all I mean. All right, let's get a free attack from Jamka. All right, okay. Now we move backwards with our lord in the speed run. Okay, love to see it. Oh, <laughs> all right, this part. <laughs> I've seen this before. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> You've seen Archer gets trapped, but have you seen Archer traps himself? And then yeah. gets recruited by the enemy. Jamka puts in quite a bit of work in this speedrun, actually, which is kind of funny. That is odd. Because uh, this is like the only part in the game where he seems to be part of the fastest solution to everything. I mean, to be fair, it's, it's pretty good. He, he, he kind of is, because Killer Bow and Akos and Adept and Pursuit kind of all good. And we don't we don't really have that many delete buttons with us because mm -hmm. we don't want to move too many units with us. It's just Sigurd and Finn right now, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming Finn can still two shot brigands with the steel. Does he? Oh, Let's not see. this one. Not yeah, he doesn't. One. Okay. Rip. Is that a stronger one? Uh, I think or they're they're all equal. Because Jamka's the boss, right? There shouldn't be any distinction between strong and weak ones. Oh yeah. But yeah, Sigurd is. I think over. He's doing like 
uh, if you were to, to two to go, we'd have to do 23. I think I did a little bit more than that, but this is with uh, like five strength procs behind him. Jeez. Like, Probably a lot. I think I think he's gained like six or seven resistance levels. <laughs> resistance <like>. levels. <laughs> yeah. Like that's like I didn't really think about it when I learned this until I saw like why he got so much resistance for like chapter two, I think. You'll see why that resistance is really important. Okay, sometimes so one of the trends you'll see here is sometimes you'll see Idine just use return or warp for no apparent reason. Um that's there's that reason's twofold. Um you already kinda hinted at it that one Idine kinda needs to hit level twenty to use a rescue staff herself. But uh, the RN, burning RNs sucks in this game. <laughs> one, of the, one of the best ways to burn RNs is to level someone up. Yeah. And Idine is a very convenient way for to do that because we need to get, get her to level 20 anyways. So uh, that's to set her up for getting a level up later on to burn RNs. And it's pretty much going to be the best way to burn RNs. That doesn't really lose time because you have to do it at some point anyways. Yeah. People like Jam because levels don't matter apparently, and you just bring them a zero oh, level up just faster. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if that was intentional or not. Honestly, I, I was just like, you know, that's really funny. I'm just gonna point it out and laugh. It feels like one of those things where you encounter it when trying to like route to run. It's like, oh, we're keeping that. We're keeping that. Yeah, you know, we keep those. You take those. Yeah, it's like I think, um, I think when I routed Sacred Stones uh, Ephraim route, um, there's like this god seat you get where like you recruit Cormag on turn two in his join map, and then like you just. Vanessa, the RNG, after like two really quick burns, Vanessa gets like a crit on a blocking Wyvern or Gargoyle, and then you camp Cormac in front of the boss, he crits the boss, <laughs> you enemy face, Vanessa dodges, Cormac dodges, and Cormac crits the boss and gets a strength steel speed level. We take those. And I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. Actually, I don't think I found that, but it's still really one. No, no I didn't find it. It was by DXD, but it's still one of those enemy phases where you're like, wow, we take those. <laughs> Deirdre, it's a silence the boss. It's just a long animation, but not as long as the Fenrir animation three times. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't want to see that animation. Oh, right, and this procs all the enemies to move down, and now Sigurd can sneak around. Let's go. Metal Gear Sigurd, that's the theme. Oh, it's going to be even better, because Salif's going to inherit Sigurd's ability to sneak around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a bold prediction that you're not getting to Brave Axe this game. Uh, what, makes, what makes you think that? Hmm. I don't know. Who's Lex? <laughs> Who? Has Lex even done a single thing? I don't think he's done a single thing. Azel has been doing the killing in chapter pro in the prologue, I he's, think. He was cheering his friend Azel. Oh, Lex, no, Lex does one thing later. You'll see. Oh, nice. Yeah, Lex does exactly one thing. Oh, this is in range of enemies. What are you doing? You don't, you don't want to fight enemies, do you? Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I, I looked into this. I'm like, I, I was like, I think you just fight a lot of extra enemies if you try to move Sigurd one tile closer. It's, but like this still kind of works out because bow animations are fast and only like three of them attack you. So yeah, yeah. there we go. At least don't get countered. That's nice. Uh, okay, you did get warp. I was like, wait, you're moving away from Doom, but you did already get warp. <laughs> yeah, I one of the things about that about learning this was like learning how to castle switch. So like one of the subtle, one of the fastest fun things to do in a lot of fire, in a lot of fire speed runs is like learning how to jump between units with like. The L button, for example, in the 3DS and the DS and the GBA games, um, or like Telius games where you can jump around units with the X button. That's not a thing in this game, mm. or rather it is, but it's incredibly slow. It's so like if you, yeah, if you have your cursor on Sigurd and you press, I think, the R button, the screen will like very slowly scroll horizontally, then vertically to the next unit, and you don't have any control over your cursor until it finishes scrolling, and it is so slow. I'm so but... glad the castle switch exists. Yeah, clunky, yeah, the, but... the L button for the castle switching, on the other hand, is really fast. And so whenever you see the screen just jumping around a lot, that's me pressing the L button a specific number of times to jump, to ca to jump around. It's like the only way to instantly switch to a different screen, it feels like. Yeah, it pretty much is. Everything else is manual. Oh, I see You're pawning keeping... off some junk. Yeah, we're not keeping the magic ring for the light brand, apparently. What's a light brand? I don't know. Thought you might want one to range, but I guess you don't want to counter enemies or see long animations, so that makes sense. Yeah. No light brand. Interesting. I think this chapter. Uh, hold up. Oh, I realize yeah, now not. why we never need the light brand. <laughs> I won't get into it now, but I just realized a huge part of utility for the light brand that usually exists does not really exist. Uh, do you want to make a guess on which chapter is the longest chapter in a speedrun? Chapter four. Uh. Let's see. I'm looking at. I'm looking actually, right now. I would usually like, say it's chapter two. Actually, I just thought it was funny to make to me one chapter four. Uh, thirty nine. Chapter four is thirty nine minutes. Chapter two is thirty eight minutes. Oh, that's close. I was close. They're very times. close. They're very close. Yeah. My first guess was right, just, though, wasn't it? 
Your first guess was right, yeah. I was just memeing. Chapter 3 is like 30 minutes, something like that, and the, chapter, and the prologue is like 15-ish. Mm. Of course, this is the sped up version, so we're not going to sit through all of that. Uh -huh. but, I'm glad you didn't yeah. speed up to spell your face, though. I was very interested to watch five horses move. Yeah, you got to see the execution. <laughs> <laughs> the execution. Uh, that execution is harder than it looks, because like one other thing that it's that you won't notice, that's hard, well, hard to notice, is like in most Fire Emblem games, like when you hold a cursor after selecting someone, your cursor will automatically stop at the at your maximum movement range in most games. That is not the case in this game. Oh yeah, you, you just have to like fast cursor and hope you land on it and get practice with that. Um, you can, your cursor does stop at your enemy range when moving if you hold a direction without pressing the Y button, and the Y button is the go fast button. You want to avoid doing that because you're, well, not going fast. But there's some cases where I intentionally do that for the reliability. Especially for diagonal movements. Makes sense. So, it's just a really different game. Mute, mute, mute swears that it's really not that bad. Um, I disagree, but she's really used to running the NES and Super, Super Nintendo games because I think that's the same case in Thracia as well. So, she has a lot more experience with that kind of thing than me. Yeah, she's a machine. Like, holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, like after learning this game, I'm like, oh god, the cursor in this game is, feels terrible. I mean, it's fun, but also, oh, I really miss the GBA uh -huh. games onward. Alright, let's see if we're gonna, you know, recruit the pieces or decide to go around. Looks like everyone else is bailing. Yep, we're bailing. By, by we're bailing. It's, it's been good. <laughs> no master like this. Or, or Finn coming in for the save. Alright. Echo getting debated. Oh, I was wrong twice. Yeah, I suspect shenanigans are coming up once again. Drop in. I'm proud of you. I I have a feeling that defense level up is going to help him a little bit here. Yeah, yeah maybe. Just maybe. Yeah, these, these enemies in green units take a really long time, so we kind of want to kill as much of them as we can. But don't you want to skip the Nightwing cutscene? <laughs> cutscene smash fiends. It's, it's not three houses of cutscenes. It's fine. <laughs> hey, 90 avoid coming up. But they still think oh, yeah. Oh, him. I spoiled it here. Yeah. <laughs> Finn activates Miracle and gains 90 avoid. Good job, Finn. I'm really proud of you, Finn. This. I guess since they all see a kill, they're just all going after him, so that works out in uh -huh. his favor. But I think this does mean you have to, like, watch MPC phase every time, right? Oh, the green phase? Yeah. And it's pretty fast. It, they, they, nothing moves after all the readiness are dead. That's so. true, but there's a lot of turns. I thought you might want to, like, get this castle seized, or... Yeah, I guess getting this castle seized is the only way to get rid of MPC phase. And we want to, I, th I think we want to blitz for the bargain band, I think. Yeah. If I remember correctly, so. Hey, love, love regret. Bargain band is interesting. I have some ideas of where it's going to go, but I'm not sure. Don't, feel free not to spoil it. Because uh, <laughs> thinking about it, like, thinking about it right now, obviously you're seizing castles fast anyway, so saving the brigands is already something you want to do. You want to get rid of the burning animations, etc. Mm -hmm. But. You don't really want Sigurd to go there, so... Yeah, we, we don't I want Sigurd to go there too actively. So but then I do have to walk all the way there, and it's also cringe. No, wait, you can work with Deirdre. That's something you could do. Okay, my, mm, my guess emoji. for right now is... Uh, <laughs> Ideen is going to get it. Let's see. Love these yeah, Sigurd's in a nice nice little tile where nothing attacks him besides the Ballista. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's easy enough to get out of trouble that way. Oh, that's, ooh, that's beautiful. I love that. Lines yeah, guys, been broken. I, killing this ballista isn't necessary at all, if I remember correctly, but it's for iron burns. Yeah, I hear iron burning sucks in this game. Yeah, yeah, iron burning kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. the next question, I guess, is you're going to get attacked by the boss, Philip, and you know you could kill him for the return ban, which seems like a really good item to have on Sacred right now, because Ethan is so far away. But that means you have to deal with double bridge shield. AK it's okay. Cookies. It's our, it's okay. We got we got our RN burns on the ballista. It's all good. No, oh, that's nice. So that's what that was for. Oh, you missed the kill by one point. That is a shame. All right. That was his name, Phillips. Philip. I don't I don't I don't know these boss names yet. I've only played the game casually like two or three times. Uh -huh. So I remember them way too well. I think the <laughs> the one of the upper oh. castles, Macbeth. This one, this one, I don't remember. Huh, well, I, I would hope you know the name, oh, some of their names by now after having solo Gen 1 with every character. Mm hmm. Although, <laughs> with the solos, they're on the screen for the shortest amount of time. Mm, true. Also, um, let me making a shout out to the rare scenario where we're seeing someone actually use the healing staff in a speedrun, because you don't see that often in general. 
Sometimes you just need health. You just need health. Who'd you heal? And R R R R and burning sucks. Mm -hmm. So like we can't rig dodges easily. Gotta get the heals. Yeah. Oh, this is a really annoying part. Especially when you're already on low health, you have no healer in your butt. Jeez, that's, that's yeah. an insane seed. <laughs> that's a, that's the god seed right there. That, that, that guy sucks to kill casually, I can confirm. Like, this mm -hmm. does not do it justice. Yeah, this isn't even like, a guy with the with the shield ring. This is the guy with the barrier ring. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like one of the thing, one of the bottlenecks a lot of times is that usually castles have like a boss and also like a castle, like a set of castle guards you have to pierce through. So, like, the fact that we're taking two turns to kill this boss isn't a big deal because we have to use an action to basically have to burn our turn to kill a guard, anyways. Yes. That's outside the castle. Yeah, it's very awkward. It works out. Mm -hmm. Seen a lot of uh, attempts at lover crits on this guy just to make that. To totally didn't use turbo there. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You didn't say anything. I wouldn't have noticed. But you didn't yeah, that barrier ring's gonna be pretty important. Yeah, I mean, if you're rigging plus M death level ups, then yeah, I imagine barrier ring is also gonna help. Oh, ray plants, okay. and conveniently the spot near where the next enemies spawn from the yeah, not the convenient. next castle, but the one after that. How nice. How convenient. Sometimes you don't have to walk all the way everywhere in Chakra 2. What do you think? Uh, so, what do you think Medir's gonna do? Medir? <laughs> we're, we're, we're lugging him along with Ethlin for some reason. Um, Where is he? With Ethlin? And they're going He's to Sigurd? He's with Ethlin right now. Yeah, okay. They're moving towards Sigurd. I don't, I don't, I don't think you need to. I, I think you already can guess what Ethlin's there for. What? My thought Medir was. Medir is an interesting question. Yeah, so Sigurd has the return ban, so we don't need Ethlin to return Sigurd. Uh, but. Hmm. I mean, well, obviously, you can get most of the brigands with Lu either Luwin or just Sigurd seizing the castle really fast. So Yeah, um, mm -hmm. we're blocking some of the villages with Luwin and Sylvia, it's because, like, block sometimes blocking it just works out RNG-wise and accomplishes something similar. But Luwin and Sylvia, are, they're going to be playing an important role in killing bandits, because we don't mm -hmm. like burning burning village animations. Mm -hmm. And Dew is coming along, I'm assuming, bearing gifts for some of these people. Oh, I guess mm -hmm. these two can also block villages in that case. That could work, I guess. But that's weird. Because you're going to seize this castle within, like, four turns. Yeah, it's going to take you four or five turns to seize it. And the, the bandits are tied to the castle, so they'll just vanish once that happens. We still want to, like, stop some reduced to burning animations, but yeah. Yeah, because if you visit a, ca visit a village like this, then the brigands is going to go find a different village. Mm -hmm. and I guess you can always outspeed them with Sylvia, as long as she's close as to the As long as we... As long as we just keep blocking them, then yeah, it works out. Mm -hmm. They're not going to burn anything. That makes sense. There's no way Bidir gets the bargain back. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, right, those guys. Those are weird. Those uh, three Cavaliers blocking the way. Yeah, so the, the, the speed up doesn't really do those animations justice. Like, those burning animations, they take a really long time. It's like, right, what was that, like three burning animations we just saw? That's like 15 seconds of time loss right there from... Mm -hmm. I think three animations, and that's been happening every single turn. We can't do anything about that right now. We're kind of trying to, but there's only so much you can do when there was nobody nearby in the first like 10 turns. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Sigurd, despite all his luck, does not have the strength to two-shot the armors for the next castle. They are so bulky. They are incredibly bulky, yeah. Like, Sigurd cannot one-round KO the boss either, so... Yeah, so I guess they have to be baited out towards one side, and then you go around? Or you can kill him over two turns, but that seems awfully slow. Mm. Also, Hi, Beowulf. Also, there's a there's a Paragon band up there that you could get, but it would take a long time. So I guess you're not going to do that. Uh, you'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Good job, Luwin. I love being able to rig with Luwin. It makes everything uh, so much so great. <laughs> I love Luwin. It's a shame he's footlocked, but he's, su he's such a great guy. Great yeah, one unit. We still haven't had to go to the arena to do uh, our end burns. Like, Holland is just sitting there being bored. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Holland exists. I forgot about that. Yeah, you know, he's, you're just never going to get him. If you never get him, he doesn't exist. Poor guy. Ira, I like him a lot, too. Ira will never meet her cousin. It's okay. Um, his oh. true OTP is with Bridget, anyways. Mm hmm. Well, Sigurd is walking towards that Paragon band. Mm. The only Paragon band. Also, you only have like one more turn for Bargain Band, yeah. And Oop. Oop, we're nowhere close to one on. Hey, this guy. boss is like super scary. Yeah. Like, yeah, he has Adept too, doesn't he? Yep. I think he has Adept. Yep. And I think a Steel Blade. And like Adept is attack speed plus twenty percent in this game. So, mm, so like, has, like really good chances to proc, even on someone like Quan. And this boss is way faster than Quan is. 
I, I think like I've always had trouble killing him casually mm -hmm. as well. His oh, friends hey. are such a joke though, they just don't attack. I think <laughs> Beowulf always attacks, unfortunately. Alright, Paragon Band. Did you send something else? I deposited Paragon Band. Oh, wow. Um, so oh. we're not, Tigger's not going to use it for, for Who now. needs level ups anyway, right? Yeah, who needs level ups? So you went out of your way to get it, and then you immediately deposited it. Oh, we're, okay, goodbye, Beowulf. Oh, that's, so does that look familiar? <laughs> yep. Yep, very familiar. Yeah, not, not much you can do about it. All right, good job, Adir. You did your job. I like how Game you made swarmers. it to the screen, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's not even a green unit, technically, but mm -hmm. might as well be. Oh, hey, Ethlins. How oh, very convenient. She snuck in there very smartly. I missed that part. Let's go. I am so proud of Midir for being bait. That's so good. Bye-bye. I think that occurred to me that he would do that, but I didn't think he would survive doing that. But apparently he can. How oh, very nice. Yeah, just one enemy. Mm-hmm. Of course, it has to be Midir because he doesn't counter. Pretty cool. He has a mountain and doesn't counter. Yep. Very, impor very important um, factors. Yeah. He's just like Sheenon from Path of Radiance. Can only be replicated by disarmed Noish and disarmed Alec. <laughs> that is true. That could they could do that too. But this saves a menuing. So we have two castles left, and there's I think there's going to be quite a bit of like side questing. Or like a side objectives we're gonna try to meet, um, including get, trying to get the bargain band. Yeah, I mean you had to seize that turn. The village was like left with half a house basically. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised. It's kind of ridiculous how tight it is. Yeah, you still have to collect it too. We still have to get it. Yeah. Now what turn is this on? We've captured. It's like roughly like turn 23, 24, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Do is here to get the. Oh, we're all like tw turn like 21, 20. 20. Mm -hmm. Luke and getting villages is interesting because I didn't, didn't expect him to be, do a whole lot this run. And the village, like the villages, no longer need to be protected or anything. So that's they don't need to be protected. But we do want to get the armor slayer for chapter three. Oh, you might be noticing. You might be noticing why I mentioned there's. I've been mentioning chapter three a lot. <laughs> lots of armors there. Lots yeah. and lots of armors and bulky bosses. Yeah. I think, yeah, Seeker with a bunch of strengths should be able to do shop with the Armor Slayer, because the yeah, great does. piercing effect is so good. Doing Doubling your attack and then subtracting defense is so much more damage to armors than the other way around. Mm -hmm. And also, um, Eren's crew is also flying towards us, and we're going to recruit her. I, I'm, well, there's two, two reasons for it. Uh, one, I'll explain it later. The other, I'm assuming she just wastes, wastes time if you leave her as an enemy, so you might as well recruit her. Yeah, she doesn't attack Luwin if he's on the castle. I know that much. Uh, I know what troops do. Oh, she doesn't? I didn't know that. No. Huh. I mean, do you have a conversation if you make Luwin attack her, I think? But uh, if you don't, then she just chills. Uh, it's so refreshing to see them have like eight move instead of like four. <laughs> also, it looks like I was uh, wrong. Sigurd is going to get the bargain band, curiously enough, because he's on, like, on the way there along with Ethlin. You wouldn't do that if you didn't one secret to get the bargain band like why else would he be his gut forsaken force why else would you go back to the spirit forest basically <laughs> oh so all the way back to the spirit forest i see poor guy all right these guys are just walking into finn and kwan's arms mostly finn's i'm assuming Ooh. he never got healed from that miracle did he or did he i don't think he no he did he got healed he got healed both kwan and finn did get healed i think good Afraid so yeah finn's gonna be to is going to be putting in some work. Mm -hmm. Intercepting that. I guess Ethan had to go here anyway because you have to return Luwin to get Uranus. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she uses Return on Luwin to get him there, yeah. So Turns that's band. kind of good. Organ Band. 500 gold. Oh. I have free trouble. That village barely survived. Organ Band as well. <laughs> I did. Gotta get max mileage out of these bands. They're banned from Sigurd's Infants work. Don't you get it? Yeah. Uh, Racist is gonna love that one. Uh, right, Sigurd, oh, let me go home. Go home, Sigurd. I, I hate the scrolling in this chapter, but I do love how you can like distribute units over the map to get the different objectives a little bit. That's pretty cool from a management mm -hmm. point. It's just like the FE1 convoy. It doesn't feel very good to do, but it is very neat. Yeah, I respect. I actually kind of like the um, convoy. The the item management system in this game a lot, honestly. Mm -hmm. But it's not everyone's ta taste, and you know that's also okay. There's a lot of micromanagement in this game, mm -hmm. just in general. Right. Good job, Sylvia. Doing nice. your answer's job of moving Sigurd forward one extra turn. Yeah, I was about to say, that's probably all she's going to do for most maps, unless you need four people to be somewhere. 
There, I know in LTCs there are moments where you want her to have the leg ring, but this is certainly not one of them. Because uh, I, I heard this is not an LTC actually. Yeah, I, I heard it's not it. I, I I don't. I think the only LTC I've seen was um, Valk's uh, mm -hmm. ranked one. I don't know how many turns this chapter took though. I've seen definitely a, way less than this. I've seen a zero percent growth one, but that's about it. Oh, that's not terrible. Yeah, it was commentated at least. That made it more bearable. It's terrible for the, for the person who did it. Who did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, if Secret doesn't get these level ups, then everything just gets uh, hella slow. But it was an interesting oh. one for sure. I don't think I can find it anymore. I don't remember who did it. Good job, Finn. Hey, 1 HP. Hey! Plus 1 Hundo Avoid for free. It looks like he's in range of all these enemies because of all the roads. Yeah, I think Quan baits like one of them away just because it works out that way. One ruining it. Oh, that that, that got a javelin. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't switch weapons on enemy phase. Nope. Or yeah, enemy phase, I guess. Good job, Ethlyn. Yeah. I think that is Ethlyn's last roll in a run. I think. Oh wow, that's soon. she. She might return to. I don't remember if she does. I would expect her to it. return someone in chapter three to get back to the original castle. But I guess she. She might use it once, but. Yeah, she's she's not. This, this is like her main chapter to shine, and that's about it, really. Mm -hmm. So secret. I think she does like one return near the home, home castle on chapter three early on, but that's about it. So secret got the the paragon band now, right? In the bargain band. In the, in the uh, convoy. Did he? he? He did do some like convoy management, but it would be very strange if he sent those items off only to retrieve them like I, I, later. I think he did grab the paragon band. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've been I've been watching too much. I haven't actually like. Yeah, okay. He deposited the return ban and withdrew the paragon ban when he got. It. Okay, yeah. if that was it, that makes sense because I think the bargain bans is more of a like a chapter five thing. If I have to guess. Mm. All right, more kills yeah, for the silver taking... sword. Yeah, we kind of don't want these guys running around and harassing units because that takes cost time. So best to just kill them all and also funnel some experience into Fen because again, he'll be pretty important. Yeah, that's surprising, because you do have the Armor Slayer. Oh, now we get Lachesis, all right. Surprised to see that she's... Sigurd recruits Nightwing. Yeah, Nightwing's pretty important for oh, herself. that's true. I guess without her, you can't get so Nightwing. So we definitely want it. Mm hmm. Hmm, I'm curious. The Nightwing, hmm. I don't remember if we use it at all in Gen 1. I guess we'll see. I don't think so. Good job, Lewin. I'm getting the Armor Slayer. <laughs> I'm proud of you. They're just Lewin standing there with his new girlfriend as Aaron has arrives. <laughs> hey, his new girlfriend not. that dances for him. Yep. Noticeably not adjacent to each other. Yeah, I think we use Arm Slayer in this chapter too, actually, because there are some armors that we do need to kill near the last castle. It's interesting because those all have javelins, but uh, I can see some formations where it works out. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Good job, uh, Lewin, on recruiting oh, your right. other girlfriend. I was like, wait, you're leaving the castle? Oh, oh never mind. We're good. We're good. We have a dancer. <laughs> that makes all the other ones vanish. That's a lot better than seeing combat, for sure. Oh, they... Yeah, vanish, hey, I guess. Yeah, there you go. I always right. kill them. I never, I never, I didn't remember they would turn green and fly off. I've never seen that. I always just kill them. Oh, yeah. You just... Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you're right. Like, because you might as well just kill all them for experience before you... <laughs> <laughs> I always oh yeah, uh, are you excited for this turn? Oh yeah, the go. Two, yeah, the two move. Yeah, let's get let's it. Let's go. Quality turn. Are you ready for this turn? It's armor slayer and then retreat, I guess. Yep. <laughs> out, out, out of sleep range. But you got all your medef level ups. Why do you need? Yeah, that? no, he's not gonna sleep. I think we we move out of range just to avoid combat from all the other enemies. Mm -hmm. Wait, so does he actually have enough medef to not get slept here? I believe so. Like we we don't see any sleep at all. Period. Yeah, I was. I was expecting something like Ethan or Dew moves in range of the boss to get slept in and the enemies move, but I guess that wouldn't avoid a whole lot of combat. Yeah. But yeah. Because Sigurd's like... just gonna like camp next to the sage. The sage will die in enemy phase, I think. Either that or move out of the way, and then the boss just won't try to put him to sleep because he has too much in the. That's so much res that you need, because I think this boss is at least fourteen magic, right? Yeah. So yeah. So Sigurd's freak dress prevents the boss from trying to sleep him, and the barrier ring. I didn't mention that. Oh yeah. That made How convenient! Stupid. All the sorties aren't attacking him. Yeah, too much defense. All the all the ballistas aren't attacking him either. Oh, nice! That is a lot of hassle saved. 
This castle's a nightmare for casual play. It, it really is. It's just like, how do I navigate this with all the ballista there, too, which I can't mm -hmm. use my flyer for because she'll just get dunked on. I always just throw, like, I, I, I do that uh, baiting strategy I mentioned before, and then I just have a couple bounty units kill the armor knight and then just bunga through in one turn with Quan and Sigurd and kill the boss in one turn. Half the time I use Quan, like, I, I, this is kind of a skill issue on my part, but I feel like I always overestimate Quan's bulk and he just dies on this map. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hey, he's a pre-promote. He has like 15 defense. He'll be fine with the javelin, and he just dies because he can't dodge anything. Yeah, you, you can take the ballista hits, and that's all we need to do for that strategy. But if you put him up against that group, for example, then he gets doubled he by die. armadons and wrecked by the mages for sure. Congratulations, Ethlyn, on burning our ends with that level up. Yep, she did return like you like you predicted. Oh, it's a boss with a horse slayer. I'm sure that will be a big threat. Hmm. Bigger than his nine HP. Ugh, look, so many involved turns right here. Just move Sigurd forward. Ugh. What game? <laughs> yeah, I think when I was learning this, I was like, okay, it, it usually took me like two hours to learn each castle because it just you have to play it perfectly. And after this castle, I'm like, okay, only one more castle left. <laughs> it's it's going to take me like two hours. And I'm like, wait, all I'm doing is moving Sigurd forward and like, that's it. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> I love that the armor has moved exactly so that you just walk by it. I'm like, what uses a castle guard if they do that? Come on. <laughs> You had four move and you chose to do this, or five move, I guess, in this game. Alright, and now. Oh, they don't I don't attack. remember they All attack. Right. They, just, they just don't. Yeah, yep. easy. Too much easy defense. Games. That's like. That's a lot of defense you got on your Sigurd. These guys must have like 20 something attack. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think we ever get to actually see Sigurd's final stats because the level up animations don't show it. Um, we will see Cello's set stats. Mm -hmm. um, but Sigurd's, no. So I don't remember what they are exactly. That's one thing I envy, like, the Japanese speedruns for, because uh, they often have, like, trackers on the side of the screen checking everyone's stats and stuff. Yeah, that, that's really so much mean. effort. It's a lot of effort. They, it's so much effort. I'm like, I should do that, but... Ugh. It's so much. So mm. much effort. I mean, at least for these, it could be neat to edit in, like, the benchmarks you need to hit to not get attacked by these guys. That shouldn't be that much work, right? I, I've done... I think I... The big editing thing I did was showing Arvis' stats. Oh, yeah. Because it's fucking Arvis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but some Japanese runners will just go to hole like nine yards. I, I right respect there. it so it's much. So nice. It, I respect it so much. Like, I kind of want to like go over, do like post commentary for a lot of my other recent Fireman speedruns, especially the 3DS ones. But I'm just lazy. <laughs> Honestly, oh yeah, we're on chapter three. Oh yeah. Right. All right, Alec, yeah. let's go. Let's sell the Iron Sword, and then go out to bait enemies, presumably. How'd you know? Gasp. It's, it's probably some kind of two range enemies because otherwise Madeira could just do it. Or some mixed enemies because otherwise. Yeah. Madeira actually plays an important role here. Oh, let's go. Did he sell his bow too? Or did he buy a steel bow? Uh, he bought a steel bow. Okay. I, yeah. I, I think he starts with an iron bow normally, yeah. which is terrible. Worst weapon in the game. All right. Remember how I said Lex, had, Lex is going to do one thing in the run? There it Tricked is. Me. I thought he was gonna, actually going to do something. <laughs> I want my money back. Give me my money back. I don't care that we're not oh. lovers. Give me my money back. Rare turn of Sylvia, not dancing for Sigurd. Yeah, what the heck? Sigurd, where are you going? He needs he needs a brave sword, if I remember correctly. So and, we'll, and we have to talk to Ira to do that, but Ira also needs to pawn it off, which requires her to get danced. But Sigurd has to be at the castle to pawn it back. Oh yeah, I've done this maneuver before. It's very nice. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, this, this turn is pretty, like, a lot of the first turns of these chapters are really fun to execute because there's usually just a lot of fun little macro managements that we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we're throwing away, depositing the barrier ring and taking the return band again. And Sigurd's also uh, getting lots of money from the silent staff and then buying the bra Brave Sword that Ira just sold. Which is going to be, so he's going to be using the Armor Slayer and the Brave Sword a lot in this chapter. I think you still didn't pull out the bargain band. Yeah, we still haven't pulled it out. Nope. nope don't need it. Who cares that I can save 2,000 gold if I can just save frames instead? Ah, a couple pirates, but these pirates, you know, they just... They walk around for a long time before they start burning at least. You must enjoy that. Yeah, so we have time to catch up. Oh, bye, Sylvia. <laughs> yep, that's, uh, that's her whole role. I guess some enemies will get near her if she doesn't do that. Or she needs to dance inside the castle, of course. She, she, she she's going to dance inside the castle, I think. Yeah. Which, which refreshes every unit inside the castle, which is so cool. It, it, it's so great, yeah. It's like... It's so nice. It's a mass performance. Biggest, like, crowd. She, she's going to be done. on the stage in the castle just dancing for everyone. Yep. Right. So yeah, uh, you can definitely guess what Quan and Midir are going to do. Um, 
Burning Villages kind of sucks. So we're, we're gonna just go ahead and pick off somebody pirates burning villages because mm -hmm. time loss. I think that was also what Alec is doing with burning our ends on an armor knight. Or I think Alec is baiting the armor knight. Yeah. So that's that. That, that I didn't play with. So I was so I'm not 100 percent sure what the purpose was, honestly. Yeah, because if he didn't get baited, then he'd just be in his original position, which shouldn't be that bad. It could be just before Arn burns, honestly. Yeah. I wouldn't know. There's some stuff I played with and wasn't able to change because Arn burning is terrible in this game. Mm -hmm. And there's some stuff I'm like, yeah, I'm too lazy to look into this. Mm -hmm. It seems like it just works out and conveniently everyone ignores Sig Sigurd again. Except the boss. I think he just had enough attack, I guess. I don't think they have a special AI where they will attack if they don't have enough power. And now you can't reach that castle, Sigurd, because there's too many enemies in the way, so Armor Slayer yep. time. Armor Slayer time. That's nice. I always feel a bit silly using your Armor Slayer, because it means I could have been using like my Brave Sword for you no know, more crits, but I gotta get through these, and I gotta do it yesterday, so here we go. It also like burns the arms differently. Like if we hit um if we land two hits with the Armor Slayer versus three hits with the Brave Sword, they burn different RNs, so like presumably yeah. it's it's, it's it's just a separate tool to help burn RNs. Also, there's so many because RN burning sucks. Also, there's so many guys that like the brave sword could even break if you use it too much here. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on like what you're fighting, if you're ignoring half the enemies, you probably want not gonna break a 50 use weapon. But I've had it happen before. Oh right, yeah. We, we just don't kill the armor knight because <laughs> then he blocks everyone else off. I forgot mm -hmm. about that. <laughs> nice. How convenient. Formations to not kill stuff. Very good. In this case. Alex. Good job, Alec, on baiting enemies away. Alec, this can't catch a break. Nice how most of these enemies don't even get to attack you. Very cool. Only, <laughs> the, only the Captain Ballista has enough attack to attack. Or hit, I guess. Yeah, one mm -hmm. of the two. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know. I think one of the villages that Medea is saving has the Restore staff, which you said you're not going to see Sleep this chat, this this game, so I also assume yeah. you're not going to see uh, Restore this game. We're not getting it. We're not getting it. Sad. Good job, Medea. Well, I guess he's just doing it to save the town and save the frames. You know, gotta save villages. Mm -hmm. Pretty important role. Sigurd's a very responsible lord that cares about his people. Mm -hmm. So he makes his minions do it. The Quan's role is done for now. He just killed the other pirates, so that's neat. To be fair, this is like 10 turns before he leaves. <laughs> There's not much left for him <laughs> to do. Oh yeah, this is his last chapter. Yeah, same for Finn. Yep. Well, he's in chapter four, but just to leave. <laughs> he just leaves there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we need the Brave Sword for this guy. Because I'm even casually, this guy has a Bolt Sword, I think. Yeah. And he's really fast. Yeah, and I mean, you double just him with really your Brave. Tough. So you double him with Silver, but you need to crit to kill him. And that sucks. I'm not sure. This might be one of those bosses that would, like, close range you if you stand in front of him. But I'm not sure about that. I think it is. I don't, I, I, I don't know. No, dear. No, dear Dre, come back. She never gave away her money. No. Or did she? All right. No. Okay. We, we did like nothing with her besides silence. No. So much money on the Cross table. Cross knights. Oh, look at, look oh, at all of them. You didn't do the thing with Finn where he does a javelin cross knight stuff. Oh, yeah. No, Finn's not going to fight them. No. I thought that was going to be his thing. Either that or like Brave Lands ahead of schedule. One of these two things. Yeet. Yeet back. See, that could have been Ethelin returning him, but then you have to move Ethelin all the way there, over there mm -hmm. which I guess is very time consuming. And, we're working and we can dance anyway, so it works out. Mm -hmm. Curious. Curious indeed. What is Finn doing? Oh, I know exactly what Finn is doing. He's not doing anything for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I know what he's gonna do. I have my suspicions. Right, but you get the Good next job, here. Oh my god, we're, we're really proud of Medir. How'd he do it? We're really proud of Medir for just playing this really important role of killing bandits and yep. saving us burning animations. Jamka could never have done this. Nope, he would not have the mobility. Mm -hmm. I think Finn's just kind of there to protect the top villages from because there are going to be some bandits mm -hmm. showing up soon. Oh, hey, where are they going? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess Finn can do that. I had something else in mind for him, but maybe he's, he's going to do that as well. We'll see. Right, Ooh, barely two shots. two KOs. Jeez. Like how I said barely, you said that. You said barely, I said uh, <laughs> yeah. easy. It's all perspective. But yeah, that's a good True. way to get Elegant out of here. 
if it's not going to be Lakeesus. It's, yeah, Qu Quan's like, yo, I have your sister Lakeesus. So, well, actually, he doesn't even know Lakeesus with the Sigurd, is, does he? I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. I... If Lakeesus is like with Sigurd. I want to say they, ta they talked about that when they were at the last castle at Augusty, when Sigurd sees that, but uh, I don't know. They're not very good at communicating in this game, so... Well, they're not very good at guarding this castle either, but I guess their goal was to attack, at not least guard. These didn't move out of the way, you know, it's an improvement. Yeah. It's baby steps. <laughs> baby steps, indeed. Now, Sigurd doesn't do baby steps. He just moves, like, nine tiles, soon to be twelve. Yeah, notice how, like, Sigurd's not really getting any more MDF levels anymore, because he doesn't really need it. It's insane. He... I can't get over how we hit like a 14 magic risk benchmark. It's so much without <laughs> surfing. Okay, another interesting castle avoid. No one's here to help him this time. He's just doing it all by himself. All by himself. Like I know secret and... soloing is easy, but baiting enemies away and then getting around them, that's tricky. That's hard. That's that's the tricky part, right? Because like if you just want to kill everything, then that's relatively yeah. easy to do. But we wanna... is right there. <laughs> we want to do it in such a way that's as fast as possible, so we want to kill fewer stuff, of course, if we can. And he has the Armor Slayer right now, right? And he's exactly two shot again. Yeah, he, he has the Armor Slayer right now, I think. I think... Does he? I'm not sure. Probably. Like, no, either that I, or I can't super read, sword. I just... Uh, he just has, like, a ton of attack. Castle. But that's gonna be, like, a lot. Bra he has the Brave Sword equipped. He has the Brave Sword equipped. Oh, I guess it's just too sped up. Tell that it's four hits. Because there's no way he's two shotting with the Brave Sword, right? That's, Maybe that's he so is. so much. My nose says that he does... Equipped the brave sword. Well, this is armor slayer. Oh no, no, that, that's that's. I'm reading ahead of my notes. He's he's silver sorting. He's silver sorting. Okay, good. I was worried there. I mean, the, the silver sword is only like a little bit stronger than brave. It's like two or four points, I think. We also want to get kills on, kills on it because we do want to get grit on it. Mm -hmm. Hey, magic. It's like Bardo is not. A, hey, magic. The that silver blade will be used like once <laughs> in Gen 2, by the way. Twenty might. <laughs> oh well, yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Salifol uses silver blade in chapter seven. Good job, me on spoiling that. How weird is it that a twenty might sword is not used a whole lot in FE4? Even in casual play, I never used a silver blade. <laughs> Sixty hit is really something. All right. I really love how like the game like demonstrates that you can have an archer enemy face. Mm -hmm. Kind of. In FE4 of all games. <laughs> it's honestly kind of a cool to little touch. Mm -hmm. I respect it. And then you forget to move Bridget, and you learn that she doesn't always enemy face everything. You forget to move around, she's just stuck and she dies. Yep, yep. Which, I mean, that, that could be a faster strat in speedrun sometimes. Maybe. We'll see. Eh, she just runs. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense, too. Yeah. It does take a while Lost. for her to die. Unfortunately, the Braggy Tower that Claude and Tilju come out is not a castle you can switch to, so that's gonna be a lot of scrolling. Yeah. We have to, like, scroll all the way, yeah. Thankfully, I don't think we moved them very much in this chapter, so. Okay, I was wrong about Finn. I thought he was gonna kill the pirates up there, get him out of the way. Oh, no, no, we're not killing them. No. Then why do you need so much training? Just to kill so the all that, that all those villages that do visit it was to basically give Idin money. And she's going to get, I, she, I think she's going to get the Paragon Band, if I remember correctly. I mean, that saves her a lot of warping. Yeah. So to read off my notes, uh, Sigurd just repaired the Silver Sword and pawned off his Paragon Band. And Idine just bought the Paragon Band back, and now she's going to warp Sigurd and get a lovely level up here. And as my video says, every warp she does now gives capped 100 experience, yep. which is a free level up. No 120 XP for you. You can never have more than one level at a time if you in Fire Emblem. Good level up, Idine. Very, very good flank <laughs> level. Very fast level up. <laughs> very fast, yeah. Up Her levels level. just do not matter, so fewer stats the better. But yeah, she does need to hit level 20 to use the Rescue Staff and mm -hmm. pass it down to Lana, so... Mm -hmm. I guess Tiltu and Claude don't have to move them, because they didn't. <laughs> There's like going to be one enemy that attacks them, so they do need to take care of that, but like that's about it, really. Uh -huh. Also, we just got the Sigurd Emblem Ring. Yay! Plus three move! Plus three move. Emblem of Genealogy. Right forward. Does it give two or three move and engage? I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's two. It's been so long since I played engage, I couldn't tell <laughs> I you. I haven't played engage, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, someone, in, someone in YouTube comments will know. It's Good job, Bridget. I think it's one if he's not engaged, and it might be like five if he is. It's so much. That's... Yeah, giving like plus one unengaged sounds correct. And Yeet. Warping two, who's, he's definitely gonna get the wind sword, right? Oh yeah, sure, definitely. Totally not out of the way. Oh, he guard the... Also guard two. 
Oh, because yeah, this, this oh, yeah. plus three strength is really important. Yeah, because he needs it to two a KO to chapter seven bandits with I think the steel lance. Whichever lance doesn't have the brave effect, I think it's the steel lance. Because like it's he uses the alternate between the brave lance and the steel lance to control the RNG mm -hmm. in chapter seven later on. So yeah. Oh, how convenient! Only one enemy blocking Sigurd. Too much avoid and probably too much defense as well. Like I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he hit both benchmarks for that. If he still has a speed ring, he definitely already had the speed benchmark ages ago. Yeet. Oh yeah, very productive warp right here. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Get used to this. <laughs> Did she even warp someone somewhere? Was it Arden to somewhere else? What the hell? I I, I literally just turbo the A blessing because it does not matter. <laughs> it's literally just for the experience and the Arden burns. I think Dew blocks that castle to like make the enemies come downward instead of attacking Sigurd. I don't remember off the top of my head. But like he's gonna have too much avoid, so they're just not gonna do anything. Yeah, kind of odd because in, in, I think in prologue we saw enemies move towards a castle that was just unguarded instead of moving towards the closest player unit. And they're moving up anyway. Oh right, okay, okay, I'm wrong then. Never mind. Why do we? I I think I guess we just he, oh no, do guards the castle so we can warp another unit up there because you can't warp a unit on a castle gate if someone's already blocking it. If I remember correctly. Yeah, but. He didn't have to warp do on the. Oh yeah, you could have just warped someone to the home castle, I guess. Instead, it wouldn't have mattered. Maybe. Don't ask me. I didn't route this. <laughs> I, I made some change. I I barely touched Gen One. I made like a few minor like cursor adjustments for like reliability purposes in terms of execution. But I oh now they're, now they're coming down. Cool. I don't think anyone really understands how the AI works. I do know that the AI actually uses their RNG to the, sometimes to decide like who they want to target. Yeah. So I know that's one factor. But that is actually something that we try to take advantage of later on. Because Iron Burning sucks in this game. It sure does. My Brave Sword Secret gets another overpowered ring for free. I think this is the Strength Ring. Yep, the Power Ring. Oh, oh it's literally called Power Ring, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I call it Overpowered Ring, but the same thing, right? Same thing, yeah. Goodbye, Brave Sword. That's the last time we'll see it. Damn, that's... uh. The shortest career for the FE4 breakthrough I've ever seen. Yeah, it really is. Goodbye. I mean, if you could get the Brave Sword to create fast, that would be one good thing. But uh, yeah, it's re it's really because it's just later, so mm -hmm. we we just have way more kills built up on the Silver Sword, so we yeah. just rather use that. Like the Brave Sword is better for damage and casual play, but you'd also have to see more animations raising it, even if it did join at the same time. Mm. Kind of. Oh, goodbye, Quan, Finn. Bye. I'm sure you'll goodbye. be okay. I miss you. All three of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. uh, this is one of those. So there's a lot going on here. So uh, Sigurd's gonna deposit some junk he doesn't need, including the armor slayer and a shield ring, and he's gonna pick up the speed ring and the barrier ring again because there's gonna be a lot of magic users. Um. And then coming up soon, we're gonna see some Jumpka gaming. Oh. Hi. And Bridget. What? Interesting. My guess is these people are in here to get rid of some of the mages that straggle behind Sigurd. And a dance. A three way dance. Or this is more dance. than just move Sigurd forward mm -hmm. dance. You can also kill bandits, I guess. I guess. Yeah, but, but, yeah this, this, ca this map has a lot of bandits burning villages that are really out of the way. Mm -hmm. So one of our bottlenecks is Dew. Um, oh, by the way. Yeah, Dew is going to throw away his sword because so he has more avoid against the Lance Armors later on, so he doesn't die. But one of our bottlenecks is basically trying to like get Dew because we need him to open the bridge near the upper right castle. Yeah, I mean, you could move Sigurd through the mountains instead, but I guess it takes longer than logging Dew around. Yeah, I imagine it does. I didn't route it. It's, it's a big difference. Because one of them is moving Sigurd for a lot more turns. The other one is moving an extra unit every turn that you're moving Sigurd. So I wonder how close it actually is. I know LTC Sigurd's wise. taking. I know Sigurd t t actually makes a few detours while moving Dew to kill some bandits. Mm -hmm. So like I imagine it's it's definitely still worth bringing Dew along because you, you kind of want to kill every bandit you can. Mm -hmm. Hey, jealousy oh, formation. Jealousy formation. Let's go. Yeah. So um, if you missed the com text commentary, uh, Idean. Idean is adjacent to two women who are both adjacent to Claude, and so she is stealing like lover points, like 
from like both of them that are going to Claude. So Claude is getting like a bazillion lover points per turn. So they're gonna get married. Um, and Sylvia and Aaron also have a conversation that automatically happens if you end their turn next to each other. Which gives Aaron and Lewin a lot of lover points, and they're also going to get married. Yeah, I always try to avoid that one, because if I want to do uh, Lewin, Aaron, then I can just do the conversation that happens after Sleazy has seized. And if I don't want to... It always them, annoys me, because I half the time I don't want to pair them. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I want to pair Lewin with someone else, like Arthur or something. Like, not Arthur, um, Hilti or someone. Jenka game. And I'm just like, oops, I, I'm going to dance for a feet of Aaron. Oh, wait, that mm -hmm. conversation happened. Never right. mind. Reset. We know. But I guess this way you just get their lover and they're in love without having to do the conversation after. Yeah, we're getting their. We're, there's only literally only one reason we're marrying them, and we'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. yep, but yeah, so you're just making bandits. Bandits are the top priority instead of killing mages. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of those maps where, like, in the enemy phases, I usually, in this sped up version of the speedrun, I like times three speed. I did like a times three speed up version of the enemy phases. This chapter I did time six. <laughs> You'll see why. Yeah, I think you know why. <laughs> a lot of uh, range attacks coming in. Well, not yeah. this one, I guess. I think I also saw Silver Sword Crit there. Not that might have been it. I missed it. Because the benchmark for Oko is really high, and I didn't see the mage counter. It's, it was probably a crit then. It could have been an Oko if Sigurd has like cap strength. Because I know with cap strength's javelin power ring, he doesn't Oko. But the javelin is about as strong as the silver sword, isn't it? Um, uh, how much? I think the javelin has like twelve might, doesn't it? Yeah, the silver sword is fourteen, I think. The silver sword will be a little bit stronger. Either way, the mage died in one hit. Yeah, the, 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 the mage died, and that's the important part. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's go! Fe4 AI moments attacking archers at two range when they could attack at one range. Oh yeah, they could because they have a path through the town that doesn't cost them any movements. Yeah. Bridget kind of... Bridget enemy phasing a lot. Good job. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad the game demonstrated to you that she can do that. Otherwise, she wouldn't have known. Exactly. <laughs> Still gotta get through these mages somehow without fighting them, though. But I was, I was like... I Dean, please notice me. No. <laughs> busy. Go away. I'm, I'm, I'm busy warping this other husband, though. <laughs> away from me. <laughs> Call the it's order. just so funny to see, yeah. The restraining order staff. I don't want you. Go away from me. Get away from me. Warp. Hello, human resources. Ugh. Goodbye, sleep staff. Goodbye, sleep staff. Who would otherwise? I forgot. I forgot he has a sleep staff. Yeah, so I guess you need the barrier ring for that. I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't think Super has been hit by the wind mages a whole lot yet. Eh. I'm proud of you, Jumka. Boop. I'm pretty sure Bridget would just two-shot this guy. <laughs> well, she's got other things to do, too, though. Apparently. She got to bait a bunch of guys. Kill even more mages. Please, That's let them all attack at two range. It'd be so funny to me. Oh, she's, like, dying. Holy shoot. She about to go down. Mm. Eh, she will be fine. Oh, Jamka, you gamer. What a gamer. Is he doubling a bait? Jamka, good. Heck? Jamka, good. Is he a base level? Why, why people put him at E tier? Good unit. Look at this enemy facing. You can keep up on a speed run, guys. <laughs> that doesn't show he's efficient. I don't know what does. Amend right, so the tier list. There's one little thing, he, little uh, tidbit coming up here. Um, interesting little tech. So like when you sometimes if you're when you try to attack an enemy that's like slightly off screen, like then the screen has like very slowly scroll up towards enemy and a scroll back when you attack them. Um, and a lot of times it's not worth it, but like when I move Sigurd to attack this sage coming up after the dance. Um, so like if you watch my cursor when I move Sigurd again on this turn, I'm going to intentionally overshoot it a little bit to the upper right, because if I don't do that, then the screen like slowly scrolls right then up to show the mage getting attacked and then scrolls back. Um, and there's like a few spots where I intentionally scroll the screen like that to try to save time and it saves like one second. That's neat. I just think that's neat. Neat little tech going on there. I do it once against Arvis. <laughs> yeah, because Arvis is like all the way at the top of the screen, I think. Oh. He was like, I'm going to visit the... No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just tagging along. I'm not allowed to say so, yeah. anymore. I'm going to intentionally overshoot the cursor here. Yep. 
And there we go. Makes sense. Yeah, I think he's just Okoing without much help, because I think I saw briefly he was doing... He had like 44 HP or 41 That's HP. That's Diggard. It's a lot. Oh, here we go. Here, here comes the Onslaught. <laughs> I'm surprised these people are attacking him, because he was taking not enough from the Javelin armors earlier. Maybe they're just more, just more aggressive. I don't know, because like, he is pretty bulky, but also Weapon Triangle, I guess. I don't know. He, I think he went yeah, he is taking eight. damage. Yeah. He is taking like one damage from these. Yeah, it's, it's one or two. I don't know if they attack if they do exactly one damage, but I know they would refuse to attack if they did zero, but then default to one. 54 HP. Yeah, and I think they're doing two. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, okay. This is, a, this is another bathroom break, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I think they have slim lances. Besides the boss, she has like a silver sword or lance, I forgot which. I think she has adept, which is actually pretty scary. Like, this Pax's group is surprisingly scary casually, in my experience. Mm hmm It's like, oh, you're charging through, like, all these forests, but but they can just fly around it and pick off your weaker units. Yeah, I think these also come with swords, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not entirely sure about that, so Lex is not the best aiming phase solution for them anymore. Sigurd always is, of course, but... Sigurd is a solution to everything, just like Camila. Let's say you're playing this game for the 50th time, you might not want Sigurd to do everything. Yeah, that gets kind of a little boring. <laughs> not here, though. Here we're going fast. We're going fast, and going fast means Sigurd Bunga all day, every day. Sigurd Bunga breaking some villages. In this one, he is actually carrying about his own lanes a lot. He's, he's freeing every single village himself, besides a couple by Jamka and Bridget. But yeah, yeah, one you, one of these you... villages has a like a secret conversation with Sylvia, right? Yep. Uh, I think the one closest to the upper right castle. Maybe the one next to that. I can never remember that. I, think it's I always have to look like, it up. I think it's one that's not being burnt, if I'm not mistaken. It also used to freeze the game back with the Ultra Chain patch, because Sylvia would just keep Ooh. dancing forever. And it, it's soft I didn't know about that, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't tried this route on the, um, pro the Project Naga patch before. I imagine it, at least Gen 1 should absolutely work. Um, but I do believe they like fixed the Authority glitch, Star Glitch for Zelif. And so I don't know if that would actually have any impact on like following the speed run with on Project Naga because there is like an intentional reset we do to fix it, and I don't know if any of the changes for that quality of life in Project Naga would have any impact on the RNG. So some, someone can try it if they want to. Mm -hmm. You ever have uh, four hours to spare? You have four hours minimum, to spare. if you just do it perfectly the first try. It's okay. Presumably you're playing on an emulator, so you can just speed everything up. It's kind of inconvenient here that those sword fighters aren't going to attack Sigurd. They're just going to keep following him. We're just pretty much just going to have Sigurd run around, kill the bandit, kill these enemies one by one, because these enemy phases are pretty fast, so we might as well. And they're yeah. kind of blocking Dew from getting to the bridge. Yeah, I was about to say, Dew might not like having to fight them. <laughs> nah, no. Especially because he threw his sword away. Oh, we've stopped every burning village. Congratulations. Yep. Fortunately, they're all on this side of the map. There's no inaccessible places with burning villages. The worst. Yes, I think those two sages don't move, but they do have one to two ranged homes, mm -hmm. which is convenient because by just plopping Sigurd in between them, they're just going to die in enemy face. I love the, the war mage inventories. I think this guy's like Slim Sword plus Blizzard, and then there's another guy that has like... I don't know. I think if you... There's some mages that have like 3 to 10 range, and they have just one range. So if you're talking about two range, they'll go up there with 3 to 10 and weigh themselves down a lot. Oh, that's funny. It's very adorable. You are moving due every turn, right? Um, we haven't moved them a few turns because we need to wait for that sword fighter to get out of the way, basically. Where's due right now? Is he not? Uh, he's like right before the bridge. Oh, okay, I thought he was like way further behind. I was like, why are you not moving him? Oh yeah, I see. Okay, he's pretty close. Yep, we just need to like get enemies out of the way so we can keep moving him safely. Tightly planned. And then you have a castle full of two range enemies in the way. Oh yeah, the one spot where Madeira would have a really good enemy face. <laughs> or Bridget, I guess, but you can bring her yeah, up here. I was here. about to say, I think you mean Bridget or Jamka. Yeah. <laughs> Madeira at this point, his stats usually don't hold up as well. He would need like some uh, some crits to get through. I imagine on your first playthrough you get attached to Jamka and give him the leg ring and a night ring and the killer bow. No one would ever do that, right? Eh. Eh. I, I and know, it I know, I know totally wouldn't one guy be me. Would maybe do that. Yeah, it would totally wouldn't be me. Mm-hmm. Probably want the night ring as well. Repositioning. Oh yeah, I, I think I gave him the night ring as well because it was funny. You got him. 
I feel like that's like the only purpose in, of the Night Ring in Gen 1 is giving the guy with the Light Ring extra flexibility. Cause... Have fun with it. Or in, in Sylvia's case, I guess it would be the girl. Yeah. Because who else has the move, has enough move to really make use of Kanto? Like, I mean, have Infantry units just aren't going to unless they have the Light Ring, yeah. yeah. There's like some times where it's like nice. Okay, so another bridge is up and another Sigurd has to block, I assume. Oh, Sigurd, it's, that, that's your friend. What are you doing? Eh, he trusts and do. So yeah, this is why he threw away his sword. That would hit him. Mm -hmm. And he'd die. Good job, Do. Good job, Do, on being a distraction. Now we just killed a boss. Yeah, hopefully, because we have three uses of the silver sword over left. <laughs> yeah, the, the silver sword uses is like incredibly tightly planned, which is why I haven't like touched anything in Gen 1 for rerouting, because it's just like, this is way too perfect. I'm sure it can be improved, but eh, mm -hmm. effort. Just don't forget to repair it. Don't forget to repair it. And um, this is the halfway point of the run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the halfway point of the run. I mean, halfway yeah. through chapter four out of twelve. Well, chapter five out of twelve, really. Mm -hmm. So that sounds about right, right? So like we're like just under halfway at the halfway point, right? Totally. Kind of, not kind of. really. I, four and a half, five and a half out of twelve. Yeah, I guess. Close enough. I mean, chapter two and four were the longest maps, mm -hmm. so it makes sense that the rest of the maps would be faster, right? So yep. no, nothing's gonna happen. Don't worry about it. Nothing weird is gonna happen. I'm actually, I actually expected this to be past the halfway point in the run already, but I guess you still got to finish the rest we, of. The, we, we still have long enemy phases in chapter yeah, two. Yeah, we still so. have the NPC phases of chapter four to dread at once. <laughs> oh yeah, that's coming up, yeah. Where you can have a long bathroom break, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like three long bathroom breaks. <laughs> yeah, so my notes, so to go over what we just happened with Sigurd, we just did some inventory management. We deposited a speed in the barrier ring. We grabbed the bargain band, and we got, grabbed the shield ring. And then we repaired the silver sword, with my, which my notes say is like, say it's repaired silver sword like six times in a row, because <laughs> I probably for, I've forgotten to do it before, so. <laughs> I have an entire page of font 72 repairs. Sword. Repair silver sword, repair silver sword. I have that a lot in some of my fire with speedruns where it's like something trivial that mm -hmm. is easy to forget. I'm just like I'm just gonna copy paste it like twenty times. Yeah, this is definitely where I look forward to like a switch remake or whatever of this game. Yeah, it's interesting because like I'm 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 always like okay, these sl sloggy enemy faces kind of suck. Don't get me wrong, but like I think I've grown to appreciate this game the more I try to look at it from a lens of this game. What came out in a Super Nintendo mm -hmm. and like the. I've never played FV3 myself besides like 10 minutes of it, but like how innovative this game was at its time, I really respect that a lot. Mm -hmm. And the f how they try to tell a story partially through gameplay story integration, I also really appreciate that. So like, I guess for someone who's played this game for the first time on their Super Nintendo, seeing like these battles play out real time and well, quote, quote, real time in gameplay must have been like super epic to see, honestly. Yeah. So like, I honestly respect this a lot. It still sucks, <laughs> but like it sucks, but I respect it. I, I, I really respect it, yeah, so... The first time like, I played this game, I I didn't know those uh, Bow Knights were coming, so I was like, oh, this battle matters. Like, they could win or lose, and then the Bow Knights show up. I was like, oh, I see. Right. Oh, no, oh, well, rip. <laughs> so much for yeah. that. I think so, like, I, so, I, the... I've just grown to have, like, a really strong appreciation for this game a lot, despite its, like, slogginess and stuff. Because, like, I don't think... Nowadays, we don't really have that many cases where you have, like, this kind of gameplay story integration because mm -hmm. a lot of stuff is just told in literal cutscenes, which has its pros for sure. Mm -hmm. I like to say that my my some people sometimes people ask like, "Hey, what's your favorite Fire Emblem?" And there's a couple that I always like, but I always come out of a, playing a Fire Emblem game with a positive experience of it afterwards. Like I'll always put it a little bit higher on my favorite list right after I've played it than before. Yeah, half the time someone asks me what's your favorite Fire Emblem game when I'm streaming, I'm like, whichever one I'm currently playing. Yep, <laughs> this one. Always this one. Just look at the screen. That's my favorite. Look, look at the screen that I'm playing. That's my currently favorite one. Yep. Yeah. You can say uh, whatever Twitch category I'm in. That's my favorite Fire Emblem game. Yeah. So that means Revelation can't be the answer because Revelation <laughs> is not in the Twitch category. It's just birthright in Conquest. <laughs> That's true. It's not there. <laughs> not even oh my god! Game. I forgot. It's, it's off the eShop. It's not there. I forgot that I made a reference to Clash here. Yep. I was just like, yeah. Oh yeah. I hope you enjoyed that player phase where we just ended turn. Good times, good times. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we, we got like the no-fly zone where we just can't do anything until all these enemy faces play out. Mm -hmm. but now we're moving Sigurd out because we're ready to actually play the game again. Yay, Aaron is action. Got to fight. Aaron is action. Let's go. Skip the Blizzard animations. 
Gonna give them civilians. Civilians. Surely we'll save them. I mean, I would to stop them from moving around. Possibly, maybe. But then again, saving them also gives you a level up screen, so I'm not sure which is faster. The, the, their turn is pretty fast, so... Yeah, I it guess makes sense to them. I guess if you're keeping the NPC phase in chapter 2, then I can see you keeping this one too. Because they don't do anything besides move, so it's... Mm -hmm. And if you, I, I mean, if you have like six units to grab them, it might be worth it, but we only really have like one who think, is busy doing other stuff. I think um, Molotov, Ye Marsha, had a route for IP4 that involved... What did he do again with these? He used these NPCs to raise someone. I don't remember who it was, though. Lewin, maybe? Because he used Force Eddie a lot. There was a different runner who did like a, a Zell ID in para and used like an item glitch to transform an item into a, a rescue staff in Chapter 6. I don't remember the details <laughs> of it. Now, that, that, that run is uh, obs is heavily obsoleted by this route now, of course. Oh, by the way, Aaron, we did a one tile dance to get Aaron to kill bonk this guy. <laughs> to avoid Blizzard animations. I thought proud you of you. For that last turn, but of course, Secret takes priority. Yep. Uh, Secret, Sleazy Sle is that way. He can go down. Let's talk to the to the mom. Oh, hey, they don't even have an other phase logo, did they? Yeah, they don't. Yeah, it's pretty fast. They're, I think they're. Yeah, the, the, these turns are gonna go so, go, go by so quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I also didn't realize the secret had a leg ring, so he just gets there even faster. And these guys yeah. just don't even chase the civilians anymore. They just chase secret. <laughs> they gave up. As secret is so far ahead, he's just gonna be like, "Yeah, I don't need to use my max move. I'm just gonna move four tiles because moving further would get in range of." the Swordfighter crew, which we don't want to do. Mm -hmm. But we still want to aggro them. Take it the Upper Castle's toast, though. Uh, yeah. Dude's kind of still trapped up there being like, help. <laughs> I have, like, 20 Pegasus Knights chasing after me. Please help. There are more Pegasus Knights than I have hit points. Please. Yes, yeah, so I think, like, the the route, um, I don't remember their name, but it was some, the person who did the Azel Idine. Um, the benefit to doing the Azel Idine pairing is to get the, you can get the rescue staff in this chapter. Mm -hmm. Whereas Claude and Idine, you can only get it in Chapter 5. Um, but it doesn't really help you in Chapter 4 for two reasons. One, Idine has to hit level 20 to use it in the first place to promote. And two, um, what's it called? We're, this chapter is so heavily bottlenecked in the first place with all these extra fights that going on that like the rescue... The, Rescue staff just is just not going to help you that much in this chapter. Mm -hmm. And in three, uh, Lana cannot use the rescue staff at base if Claude is not her dad. So she has to train up to level 20 to use the rescue staff at the start of Gen 2, which is terrible to do. Um, so whereas if she has Claude as her dad, then she doesn't have to grind at all. Yeah, and we want the rescue staff because you can move a healer five tiles and then rescue the Lord five more tiles to get more. Yeah, it right? saves you a turn. Right? Yep, it saves you a turn. It saves you a single turn. <laughs> But yeah, if you missed it, Claude and Idine became lovers. Idine got more money dumps and enough to repair the warp staff. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, like in Fates, you can't talk to each other inside the castle. No, nope, unfortunate. Uh, Idine needs, I think, one more warp to hit level 20 here. Yep, so there's a the repair. She's going to step out and warp her um, warp her auntie husband, though, Azel. He, he was there first. This, this is not how <laughs> restraining orders work. Let the man chill. Let him chill. Yay, level 20. Wait, the rescue staff is A rank in this game, I think, and yes. Idine has B rank staves. So, like, the promotion will get her up to the rank she needs. Um, oh, yeah. Um, what's his name? Four. Alec, being useful. Four Aaron, dance, being useful. Incoming. Oh, three way dance. Never mind. Wait, but Alec three is way dance. Oh, we can just block the village, I guess. <laughs> yep, you, you guessed it. That's, that's his role. <laughs> block the village. Get on there. Aaron's yeah, can block that one. That's a curious use of your only flyer, for sure. I, I think it's just faster menu because she's like right next to Alec, I think. <laughs> or pretty close. So. That's so silly. Oh, okay, no. goodbye, Night Ring. Mm -hmm. And Claude gets the rescue staff to Idine. Oh, it's nice that she got dance for sure. And, and then Idine goes back. Oh. Okay. And we chill. Oh, right, because Secret needs his turn to be active, right? Yep. Yeah, so Sigurd's guarding the castle, because uh, castle guarding is an important role, and Sigurd decided he kind of wanted a career change for a turn. It's like the Marcus Murn support. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to be Merlinus for a turn, basically, or understand what it's like to be Arden. Look, the castle's game over. He can't have a game over. Yeah, right. so um, Idine's going to promote here and be able to use the rescue staff. Um, we also are doing all a lot of inventory management in Sigurd's inventory for Selif's inheritance, and the money is actually really tight because we want Selif to inherit like exactly the right amount of money because we want him to 
actually be poor in chapter 10. The fuck? And we'll explain that later on. Oh, I but he need, okay. the more money he has, the more time we'll lose <laughs> um, at that point. So we, we need the money routing is like very specific with the pawning order we're going to do. Like, I think I tried to like adjust this a bit, but it turned out to be slower for reasons I'll explain later again, because Selif inherited too much money and money is too much money is bad. So uh, after we use the rescue staff on Sigurd, we're going to do some of that inventory management here. Um, so he's going to pawn off the return band, then buy the night ring, then pawn off the shield ring, then pawn back the paragon band in that order specifically. Because like we don't, the money is, his money has to be exactly the right amount. I think He's I know what it's for, but I don't know exactly how it's going to help. So I'm very curious to see how it plays out. You'll see. Mm, I will. But yeah. We're grabbing, depositing the Paragon Band and withdrawing the Speed Ring. And then... Hey. Sigurd, Sigurd's gotten the um, Sigurd Emblem Ring a lot. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so great. Yeah. Hey, he sure moved yep. a lot there. He sure did. Yeah, so when you rescue, use the rescue staff on someone guarding the castle, uh, <laughs> they are still guarding the castle. And when you depart from a castle, you get to move. Because, like, if you play the game, you understand what, what I mean by that, because you get to move off the castle after you depart. But since you're not on the castle, but you still use the depart command, you get to move, and you get to depart again, and you get to move. And you get to just keep moving over and over and over again. And it's great. And this is the rescue glitch. And it breaks the game completely. And it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. And it's why it is so worth going out of your way to get the rescue staff and get ID to level 20. Yeah. And the game thinks you're they're in a different place that you are, right? That's why you have to attack from this weird spot. Yeah. We're, we're, the game just interacts really weirdly um, when you try to attack another castle guard. I don't know its technical details. All I know is that you cannot attack if you can only attack a castle guard from either two above or diagonally up left. Like, if you try to attack them from the castle front, then you will lose the rescue glitch. So you do not want to do that. Um, one of the things about the rescue glitch is, like, it's really game-breaking, obviously, but um, it doesn't let you attack over and over again. Um, so I think someone in my chat, when I was streaming this, called it, called it Reverse Gale Force, because you get to move again if you don't attack. <laughs> but if you attack, you can't move again. <laughs> you still keep the glitch, but you just can't move again anymore. Um, so, like, the, the big bottleneck for the rest of the run going forward is attacking. Like, if there's, like, an extra enemy blocking the castle, then we, we fundamentally cannot capture it in one turn. Yeah. Because we have to use two attacking actions. Yeah, because you're charging the castle from, for example, up, up left, but you can't then seize the castle right away afterwards. Because mm -hmm, we either have to kill the castle um, boss immediately and then cancel to someone blocking the castle, or vice versa. Makes sense. Fortunately, you still have your lot of medef, so you don't have to worry about the sleep stabs or the meteor for that the, the Yeah, so can't be helped. Like, we just have to burn the turn here, which is why enemy phases can still take a while, or watching a bunch of cavaliers move one tile at a time mm -hmm. in the desert. Well, the good news is uh, I think Quan and uh, Ethan are going to be okay this time. <laughs> I, I, I think they'll survive this timeline, yeah. yeah. We're so fast, we're saving Quan. So uh, if you remember some of the things I mentioned about moving the camera a bit before attacking someone, because if you don't, then the screen like scrolls very slowly. That kind of applies to moving units as well, and you're going to see a lot of that when I move Sigurd like 10 times in a row. Because like if you try to move him down like 12 tiles versus like 6 down, 6 left, moving him down 12 tiles will be slower because the game has to, you're kind of moving off screen. So the game has to scroll slowly down and up and down again. Whereas if you try to move like diagonally, then the screen doesn't have to really slowly scroll anymore. So you're going to see that after I capture this castle, where I'm going to try to do shorter moves or more diagonal moves to avoid that. That's so specific. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but like these things matter. It, it, you, you lose quite a bit of time if you move him incorrectly once, even if like it's RNG manipulated. But like the execution from avoiding these slow camera scrolls matters a lot still. Sure. Well, time to go through the desert. I'm sure this will take a long time. Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> Don't have to worry about the that camera optimization when you're moving through a desert two tiles a turn. Yeah, and you can see me kind of just going around by tapping left three times instead of like all the way down. Hey, thanks for the castle, bro. Yep, but very well guarded castle. So this is really convenient because if we capture the castle like that, it skips the entire cre um end of credit what? sequence. Really? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. So now we, we now we're in Gen 2. 
Dude, everyone survived. <laughs> it's the best timeline. Everyone line. survived. <laughs> the best timeline. It's great. Line. So why are we killing Arvas again? Good question. <laughs> what did he do? He did nothing <laughs> wrong. <laughs> no, everyone, form them up. Yep. Surround them all in the castle. Yep. Don't let a single one escape. So yeah, uh, we just did a quick reset because this game has kind of has a bug where if you've never reset the game a single time, then Zelov has two authority stars. And we kind of need the third authority star really badly because each authority star gives the user plus five hit plus five avoid, and that's pretty impactful. So we just reset the like a in map save, reset the game, and then reloaded it to fix the glitch. And you can guess it. More hey. rescue glitching. Hey. Thanks, Lana, for inheriting the rescue staff. Now say goodbye yep. to Slim Sword and grab the Paragon Band for some epic level ups. This is uh, this is gonna be fun to rig. No arena and a bazillion level ups per turn if he's fighting on enemy phase. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Well, you, you you mentioned this before, but we kind of have to hit a balance between like getting self of stats, but also avoiding stuff because like no matter all the rigging can't save you from having bad stats. So we do need to grind him a bit. Mm -hmm. Nice guess, crit. Yeah. I mean, spots like this where the enemy just suicides into you right away seem like the best spot to grind him up. Yeah. Right? This this is a really good spot for him to grind on. Yeah. Um. And this is one of those maps where I like try to get a different RNG seed for. Uh, for um, I'll explain why later, but I, I just could not get it to work because burning RNs is just terrible in this game. <laughs> oh, I was. I think I know now what the kits are for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you get it. I think I remember you. I, I don't think I reasoned my way to it. I think you've told me before. To be I, I might have mentioned it. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. It's a fun um, it, it is very funny, but also very unfortunate. Hello, Oifi. Hey, Oifi crew! Oifi is so good in speedruns. He has a lot of moves. He does. Oh, yeah, he gets free healing from this as well. <laughs> yeah, guess... good. Lester! Let's go, Lester! He Lester, burned an RM! Yay. Let's go! Let's it's go! Claude Lester, no less. Claude Lester, best Lester? Question mark? Bester. Oh, take the free kill on one guy. Taking a quick kill here, yep. Because Zelob's level ups, he has to get strength every level up before the last castle, because he has to get a double crit on him. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't have enough strength to do it, I think. Take it, this is what you need. Without all these level ups. <laughs> yeah, the Night Ring is also just really good for that. Yeah, because we wouldn't be able to move again after killing, even mm -hmm. with the rescue glitch. Yeah. Because it, it kind of gives you Kanto, but not really, right? Like, uh, yeah, you're, you're using the depart command. Yeah. So you're not actually Kantoing a yeah, single time. Okay. So yeah, I'm explaining it here. So um, every child that you have, that you unlock, burns an RN <laughs> at the start of Chapter 6, which is literally the only reason we paired Aaron and Lewin, just to burn those RNs at the start <laughs> of this chapter. I wanted to try to avoid that because it costs time. I spent like eight hours trying to get the RNG to line up again here. I did, could not, I could not get it to work. No way to get so, exactly one RN, damn. Yeah, it might have been two. I don't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, like it's it's just so horrible to try to burn RNs to line up in this game, and like, ugh, I just got tired of trying to make it work in this chapter. Oh, I'm just so like, yeah, I'm going? just gonna stick to it. Yeah, going? so I don't. We actually lost the rescue glitch here. I don't know what causes it. Presumably, it's probably because of Julia. Julia. <laughs> so we kind of need to use Sally with the return band to go back home and then have Lana do her thing again. I'm sure Julia can handle herself for now, and she'll be fine. So yeah, we kind of just have to burn two turns to return band and another turn to guard. But they're pretty fast turns, mm -hmm. so it's not too big of a deal. It just looks kind of ugly. I love the return band when it just loops you up to space and brings you back <laughs> all the way. You just vanish from place. I think Lana and Self actually marry in this speedrun, maybe? No. Uh, uh, is there enough turns for that? They barely. No, no, they don't. They don't. There's no way. I think, I think they have some conversation at the end, but... Yeah. You, if you told me Julia Mary Sullivan, I would believe you. I wouldn't blame you for that. Just because of how janky the speedrun is. Hey! We're using warp the intended mm -hmm. way. And this this is the substitutes, right? This is uh what is his name? Those are our substitutes, yeah. yeah. All, everyone is a substitute besides Fee's kit, I mean Aaron's kids and um Idean's kids. Yep. Well, and the Sullivan. Yeah, the and Sullivan. Sullivan. That leaf, etc. Set up taking the scenic route, I see. Yep. This is where I usually like to play the like I would walk one thousand miles song. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just gonna walk through all the peaks. Eat. Surprised this is faster considering well he's only a couple peaks, I guess. 
Because you can also go down left and it's not you, a whole you, lot. You can't go down left, but there is a little... I think there's a little bit of desert and you're kind of going around. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's barely survived at 2 HP. Yeah. And that was a double crit. That's a lot. We're still using silver, right? Some of the crit weapon. Yeah, we're still using the silver sword, the same one from Zergard. Noise. This is with the skill ring, too. <laughs> so... Goodbye, yeah. Schmidt. Still no Brave Axe for you? Yeah, Sch Schmidt was like the big guy that I just could not get past when I tried to reroute cutting out the marriage, because like you just need so many good levels, and you, and then you need like the double crit, which was like a double hit 20%, something like that, on top of Sigurd, not Sigurd, Cell of not dying. Damn you, so. Schmidt. Do you have yeah, any, any idea guy. what kind of level Cell has right now? Uh, you'll see his stats later on um, when he promotes. Oh, true. Yeah. Wonder when that is going to be. Hmm. And yeah, so we got the Silver Blade on Sigurd like back in Chapter 3, and we're going to put it on Salif here. And the only reason for it is so we have a different way to burn our ends while killing stuff. Because it has no crit. But the Silver Sword does crit, so each time the Silver Sword's used, it burns an RN for crit, but the Silver Blade doesn't. RNG abuse through the Silver RNG Blade. Abuse. <laughs> oh, getting Balmung, let's go! We are getting the Balmung. It's going to be really useful for one enemy. Hi, I'm Daisy. To kill one sword it, fighter. <laughs> That's true, because Soliquins is like run past the rest. Yeah, this is probably, I think this is the longest Gen 2 chapter. It's like 20 minutes, 25 minutes long, something like that. Because mm -hmm. there's just a lot that's going on in this chapter overall, going back and forth. There's a lot of enemies that block Salif, and again, like, we have reverse Gale Force. In other words, we can't move again after attacking. So Salif is just going to get blocked a lot, and there's nothing you can do about it. And we also just kind of need to move around Leaf's crew a lot to try to minimize time loss from animations. That makes sense. I was thinking of, you might not need to kill bandits this time because it's still going to be a relatively short chapter, but they do waste time, a lot of it. They, even with just They do waste turns. time. I think this still takes like 15 turns, something like that, overall. Which, I mean, that, that's not, that sounds really low by like FE4 standards, but like that's still a lot of bandit animations. Yeah, and it doesn't help that the rescue clutch takes turns to set up. Because mm -hmm. we don't have an answer yet. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> reverse scale force. Bless you. Excuse me. Thank you. I'm allergic to enemies blocking Sutter's way. I'm sorry. Same. I, I don't blame you. Gosh, why do we have to block him? Goodness. Uh, it's only he gets more EXP. That's true. He does need it. Ex EXP is pretty important. Does he need the same amount of death that's Sigurd lit God? I don't know how important the MDEF is on him, honestly, and like his MDEF growth is like pretty good, if I remember correctly, because his mom is Deirdre, he has like Deirdre's blood. Yeah, it's much better. His base is better yeah. too. Secret's MDEF is kind of cringe. Mm -hmm. Good job, Finn. Mm -hmm. See, so yeah, there's a few times where like Finn will pre preferably use the Brave Lance, but sometimes he uses the, his Steel Lance, I think. Um, even though it's still two at Chaos, um, because it means the Bandit can counterattack, which it burns an extra Aran. We're burning village. We're killing these bandits to stop them from swinging their axe at the village. But I say you're just letting them swing their axe at Finn. Can't believe you. <laughs> I mean, that's what all the experience was for, right? Yeah, I'm surprised it was worth training Finn for. Kind of like just this and like one pirate in chapter three. It's it's kind of like this and like just a good chunk of chapter two and three overall. Because he he does a lot of combat in chapter two, and he kind of needs the stats for that too. That is true. So like, I, th I think it's like a combination of, yeah, it, it, he needs the stats for Chapter 2, and he might as well buff him up a little bit more for Chapter 3 and 7. All right, more guys to fight. Oh, Selev is like dying to Dark Mages. I'm used to like Shannon dying to these, but not Selev. Come on. Yeah, so Selev takes conquer damage. Yeah, so Selev heals every turn because there's a rescue glitch. Uh, Selev, the game still thinks he's guarding a castle. So like he's always getting castle healing every turn, which he kind of needs, honestly. Also, <laughs> read the bottom text. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he kind of needs the plus one skill really badly. I, I tried skipping it. I, I was like, this he, this, this has probably got the skill plus one for a reason, but I'm going to skip it and see what happens, and then he misses. That's like, And I'm like, okay, that's why. Tactician affinity level optimization for RNG. <laughs> Presumably he'll need it for Arvis too, spoiler alert, because it's Arvis. But I didn't bother checking, because we, we can't even get that far without the skill plus one. Yo, yeah, Bradley? good job, Bradney. Yeah, Ratney's used because she burnt her existence burns an extra RN, so Oifi doesn't die. Existence, Good job. <laughs> like her being there. Yeah, because I 
In this case, the Dark Mage uses an RN, I'm, I'm guessing, because there's two targets for him. And he's like, oh, I'm okay. going to use an RN to decide who to attack. And that makes it so he oh, he survives by dodging. So, good job, Ratney. You are not an easier tier unit in the speedrun. There has to be like only 20 units or so that even do anything in the run, and that might be an overestimation. Oh, the, the Ratney thing, the Ratney and Oifi thing is something that I found. Oh, right. neat. So that, that was that was one of the route changes I made that's not just execution oriented. Go me. Yay. A collaborative effort. It is a collaborative effort. So yeah, you're kind of seeing the bottleneck here again. Got to kill two enemies to capture, so we can't just capture it immediately. That was Silverblade, right? Did I see that right? Uh, probably? I think I saw you move to it. And it, what he had in his hand kind of looked like a blade, but I might be missing things. I can't tell I can't tell the difference from the sprites with the blades and the swords if there is a difference. Uh, My notes say, yeah, he uses the um, Silverblade on the left Dark Mage. Yay! I caught it. All right. And then Good go home, Radney. Oh, he's doing it again, too. <laughs> Yeah, these Dark Mages are just going to get distracted and not bother us much. So it works out. I can't believe you didn't just get Nostratu with Julia. <laughs> well, that requires like getting Julia to like the castle all the way in Chapter 6, like the center castle, right? Just or rescue glitch her. Easy. Oh, true. She could... Just walk you all the way back to the castle and do the rescue glitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can only actually rescue glitch one person at a time, right? I think so. Because like only one person yeah. can be guarding a castle. With I vaguely remember trying this, but I don't remember exactly. I don't think you can't. I don't think you can rescue glitch more than one person, but I could be wrong. Because one old run I saw use it interchangeably on like Silith and uh, Force City Arthur. That must have been a very old run because yes. I do not remember yeah. that. I mean, you know Molotov, like the Marsha. Right? I know Molotov. Yeah. Yeah. I think they they, they, they did a lot of runs back then, mm -hmm. like of the older games. So very old school name. Because I, I, I asked on the speedrun forums one time, like, hey, I want, I want to consider doing an FE4 speedrun. They were like, oh, you can check this one out. Here you go. Play this in your emulator. And oh, I'm curious to I look saw. it up now. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a thread by Mecha, so you should be able to find it if they archive all their old threads. Speed demos archive, I'm guessing, because that's like the really, yeah. really old website yes. for speedrunning. That's oh, it's, it's speedrun.com now, right? Uh, they both exist, but speedrun.com is for like the actual leaderboards and stuff nowadays. Speed people don't really look up speed demos archive nowadays, I, which I I kind of miss that website because it was back when speedrunning was a lot smaller and thus like a lot more collaborative and less com competitive in a sense. Which I'm not saying competition's bad or anything, but it was a lot more of a, like a how can we put together right? this project? Yeah, how can we put together this project and have one person put it all th together kind mm -hmm. of thing? Competition is good, but I do kind of I think. Back then, and it was a lot more collaborative, and I do kind of miss that. But that's just how things happen when they grow. Also, by your store. Nice formation, bro. Yeah, nice formation. It's a shame if someone walked right past it. Yeah, so uh, Salif misses here, if he doesn't get plus one skill. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. His store continues to vex us. Yo, magic? I don't remember what he drops there. Hold on. Oh, that's the self can't use. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Convoy Thrawn, cancel <laughs> yeah, two left. Easy decision of your life. <laughs> he's just got a magic level up, but he still can't use Thrawn, I'm afraid. Nope. Still can't use Thrawn. There goes the last bandit. I think, unless there's just one on the left part near the shield ring village, but you're probably just going to ignore him. Yeah, we don't get any villages for pretty much the rest of the run, I think. Yeah, I was referring to the bandit, not the village. <laughs> Like I think I should have bring it all oh, the moving like turn seven, so who cares? Oh yeah, it's like the shield ring in the left of the castle with lean, right? Yes. It's yeah, past I, I of tiles. One. Yeah, I think we finished the map before he gets there. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he starts moving at some at some point to like tell you like, hey, hurry up and seize the eats or else he's gonna get your shield ring. Oh, um when Salif attack Salif's gonna run all the way around here and then he's gonna attack a ballista. Um I'm gonna do that little screen scrolling trick again. Do you scroll the screen one down, one right, intentionally. Just Again, same exploit to make the screen not scroll slowly when I attack him. That's cute. And that once, was my find. Hooray. And once again, you can uh, seize thanks to Night Ring. Yep, Night Ring OP. That's pretty neat. And now you do have the option to skip the dancer if you want to. You just, uh, we do. Right we, we, we do kind of want her, though. And 
Celeth also kind of wants experience really badly. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't mean you have to deal with two more blockades. Plus the boss. Yeah, look at all that experience for him, though. Mm -hmm. So much experience. I mean, you, you don't have to take all of it. You could just take a little bit. That's true. That is true. But I guess you want to hit level 20. If, if, if only just for the extra move and the harder we, fights. We want, we, it's, yeah, it's primarily for the stats, because, again, Arvis exists. We yeah. can't crit our way through him because he has Nihil, so... You foreshadowed Arvis more than the game did. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. There's a very good reason for that. There's a very good reason for that. But you can kind of see me trying to do more diagonal moves here for the same reason as I mentioned in Chapter 5, to avoid so many pure vertical or horizontal screen scrolls. Good job, Leaf. I mean, Salif. Why did I say leave? He's not going to do like anything this <laughs> run. Poor guy. <laughs> like he's just been replaced by Lana. <laughs> but but I can use the rescue staff. Yeah, we'll get in line. Oh, Lana got dips on it first. Mm -hmm. To be fair, her mom worked hard for that rescue staff. She yep. she did work very hard. But this is going to be all Ares does for the entire run, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. I love him, but yeah, kind of useless here. I think he even equipped his Iron Lance so he wouldn't kill the guy. Did I? Or I might different have. RNs, maybe. Because he doesn't have crits without the Missile Tang. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. That I that I didn't look into, but that would make sense because Missile Tang would burn an extra RN. Well, looks like you uh, had Leaf's, Leaf's Castle Seize as well. Very cool. Oh, and these people move out of the way. That's very nice of them. Yeah, how convenient. Man. The Freegies are so cooperative. This is my favorite boss. He would have super effective damage on Celeth if he promotes, but you have Nihil anyway, so it doesn't matter that he has a Horse Slayer. Oh wait, I forgot Celeth has Nihil. No, you're right. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Deirdre. I completely forgot he has a Horse Slayer, but yeah. Yep. Well, it doesn't have a whole lot of might, and I guess it's there so that if you attack him with Ares, it looks intense. I'm not sure if he Oko's Ares or not. He probably does. It's a general. Probably does. Ares Ar 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 is pretty awesome, but like his bases kind of suck, not gonna lie. Mm. Yeah, his attack is high, but everything else is a little sus. Yeah. Like, I've definitely had him, like, die, because I'm like, oh, Missile Tain, let's just throw him in there, and he dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does die to the enemies he fights initially, but it, it would be a little bit cringe if he could just, like, solo the whole group. It would be... It, it wouldn't... It would make sense in a 4 but it would also be, like, very boring gameplay-wise. It, it, it would be kind of boring. I mean, kind of kind of fun, but also lame at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, the rescue glitch requires you to be on the castle when you get rescued, right? It doesn't just activate when you just rescue Wolfie like this. Yeah, it, it, they have to be the castle guard. Because, yeah, it depends on the game making the game think you're guarding the castle mm -hmm. when you're not. Um, that, so so uh, that rescue staff there was just for Iron Burns. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be the home castle that you glitch on? It does, right? I think it does, because... Stuff with us? Maybe not. You might be able to do it on other castles because you can guard those. It should work on other castles. Yeah. I know I've tried this forever ago, but I don't remember. Feel free to let us know in the YouTube comments. That's what my comments are for. Telling me exactly. I'm the movement here is actually really tight with self. Like I have to move him in the perfect tiles just because of all the desert movements. Like if I move him to the wrong tile once, he's gonna be one tile short of reaching the boss, and then that loses an extra. Well, move action. Move, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which, which, which is like one or two seconds, but like that's still a time loss. So like it, it, that, that kind of stuff really matters when you're doing a manipulated run. So. I'm just saying I wouldn't reset over it. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't reset over that either. Yeah. Uh, also, you're not dodging this guy. So Leaf kind of needs every bit of healing he can get. Yeah, so does Salif. Uh, Salif. I don't know why I keep mixing them up. Because <laughs> Leaf is in this chapter. He's a great character. That's true. He's pretty cool. He's they have like almost the same eyes. sprite, unpromoted. I think that's why I keep mixing them up. They do look very similar. I'm guessing Leaf had yeah. to move out of range of the mage. Yeah, presumably, I'm guessing that was for Iron Burns on um I think her name is Jan. Mm-hmm. So. Yep, and again, you're seeing the bottleneck again of two enemies blocking Leaf's way to catch capture the castle. But that's okay, because we need to get um Layla anyways. His name is Selaf. He's seizing all your castles. <laughs> you gotta remember his name. I'm sorry. <laughs> they look similar. My, my brain is just like dead right now. We call it genealogy because it's written down. Or something. Wait, what, what's what's Leaf's name in like Fire Emblem Engage again? Like the 
emblem of emblem of genealogy. Yes, <laughs> it's a little emblem of genealogy, right? And Sigurds is like emblem of holy war. Holy war, right? Okay. And together they are genealogy of the holy war. Cute. Poor Captain Planet. Hey, that's that's Guard Lancer. You you you'll do better this time. So now we got our trio of OP units: um, Selif and Lana and Layla, instead of Selif, Leaf, and V. We can just do the trio: um, Selif guards, Layla dances, and Lana rescues, and we eat. Let's go! Turn one rescue Let's glitch go. <clears throat> and warp as well. Yeah, we, we, we yeah. This warp is just convenient because it saves self moves and it's our in burns. So Lana doesn't really need to hit a level benchmark, so every level up she gets is time loss. But again, it's also like one of the few reliable ways we have of burning a lot of RNs. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of castle guards here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are. Oh, th oh, this enemy phase is great. You'll, you're gonna love it. I think I think you've seen this play out in like other playthroughs, but... I, I mean, I think I know what you're referring to. I don't think I've seen this in the speedrun. I might have not seen this part of it. So uh... there's a trio of mage sisters. A trio, you say? <laughs> there's a trio, and they really like the triangle attack. That's like one of their hobbies. <laughs> so, Mecca, how do you set up a triangle attack? Can you explain to me how you set one up? You have to go right in next to the enemy <laughs> to attack. <laughs> yeah, so what do you think they're going to do here? They die. <laughs> they die horribly. <laughs> Yeah, the, the ones that are firing siege tones we can't do anything about, so whatever. But it works out really conveniently that they die to leaf, because no, Selif. Oh my god. I have to set up a counter I, I, for this. Yeah. <laughs> just make does ask going to make a thumbnail of like, oh, is Leaf actually Selif? Question mark. Selif? Same character? Yeah, have like theory? the butter have like the butterfly meme of Is it is this oh, yeah. Leaf? <laughs> is this Leaf? But yeah, no, it's a lot of convenient experience for Selif, so, which, again, he still wants a lot of experience in general. Because we do want him to promote, eventually. Yeah, I gotta get those Master Knight promotion bonuses, am I right? Mm hmm. Master Knight promotion's pretty good. Then he can use the Thorn on Tome, am I right? That's true. Good job on our RN Burns. Mm -hmm. So I think this boss here is the same guy um, from the end of Chapter 7. Yes. And he yeah. has that. Um, what's it called? Thor's hammer or whatever it's called. So uh, no, again, this one has the dodging. this one has a Thoron because Ishtar took the Thor hammer. Oh right, right. Well, we're still not dodging because it's Thoron. You're, but... su you're supposed to say who? <laughs> <laughs> True. Good job, Salif. Yeah, there's a cutscene at the start of this chapter where Ishtar's like, "All right, I'll go kill these enemies for you, but give me the Thor hammer." And Blue's like, "No, I need that shit. It keeps me alive." I don't think it would have saved him from those crits. Nope. Yeah, Selif just moved out of range of those generals, um, barons, and all the other knights. And most boltings. Yeah. So, um, fun fact, and I learned this the hard way, for whatever reason, there's supposed to be a recruitable unit that comes out at a castle at some point, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, for whatever reason, if I pick the attack command on accident, even if I cancel out of it, the game will crash. <laughs> I don't know exactly why. I'm gonna assume, as I say in the text here, I'm guessing it's because like we just completely broke a Salio and Faval's scripting by opening up the attack command and that's that just crashed the game. <laughs> Salio. So weird. So I have to be very careful to not accidentally press the attack command, otherwise it runs dead. Like anywhere from here on out in this chapter? Oh uh, no, ju just that one turn. Okay. Just that one turn. So like right now I have my notes, avoid crash, avoid crash, like 20 <laughs> times in a row in all caps. Because I have lost a run to that before, and I was very sad. That makes sense. Can, can and I tried it on emulator. It does work. It does crash on emulator too. Can you still recruit uh, Archer guy with uh, Daisy? Good question. I haven't tried. All right. I so, haven't tried. All right. By uh, said. By said. Actual said. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> who? Hey, another general boss. Hey, I I've seen some generals before. Hmm. Have a crit. Nice of the game to rely on mountains to be choke points when they're really not. Yeah. <laughs> I like to call this chapter like Metal Gear Self because he's just kind of sneaks through all these enemies with like barely a path that exists. It's really funny. Right. And I think Self just hit level 20, so hooray, promotion soon. Yeah, it's about time. He's two chapters yeah. late. 
Yeah, because he like I, I think like you can typically promote a chapter seven if you like throw everything into him in chapter six. But we just we just don't do that here. Mm -hmm. All right, we're definitely gonna see Altena again for sure. Yeah, sure mm -hmm. sounds nice to have her. <laughs> so I think when I stream this, I like to count. I like to call this cutscene the um, what's his name? Travon's World Tour. <laughs> I love his flying animation, though. It looks like a freaking attack yeah. helicopter when he moves. Okay, so uh, don't blink, because we're actually going to see Cell of Stats for once. Yay! Great! And see just how stacked they are. Oh, yeah, I didn't speed it up. Did not speed it up. 54 HP alone is pretty good. Although, I think it's about his average. He has, like, 100% growth, so he's never going to deviate a whole lot. Oh, it's exactly 100. I didn't know that, actually. It's not exactly 100, but it, it gives him a minimum, right? He can't be screwed by more than, yeah. like, X amount. That's a lot of things. I mean, this is with all the stat rings. So yeah, that's 30 strength with the power ring. So cap strength, for sure. Stonk strength. Stonks. Stonks. Dance and rescue. And we yeet. Yep. As a reminder, though, like we can't attack castle guards from the front, and that will actually be a limiting factor in this chapter coming up. Because it just breaks the rescue glitch. I don't recommend trying it. If you want to play with the rescue glitch, do not attack castle guards unless it's from the upper left or two up. Yeah, I think you said before you lose the glitch, but I think I've also had the game crash doing it. it I'm not wrong. It, it might soft lock or crash if you try to, yeah. Basically, it's a bad idea. Don't do it. All right. I want to help Hannibal, but you're making it difficult, Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next, I actually have never tried um, Ideen. Um, I didn't in a casual playthrough, so next time I do a casual playthrough, I kind of want to try like Super Lana with all the funny staves. That just seems really fun. It is really fun. It's just nice to have movement tech in a T4 when there barely is any. Mm -hmm. And the status staves. Yeah. It just makes you feel like I'm playing Path of Radiance. Like, my casual playthroughs of Path of Radiance, I make it like a goal to try to steal every sleep and silence staff I can get. Yeah. The big thing is you get them so early. Like, in this chapter, you can already buy the sleep staff from the vendor, I think. You can just buy it with Oh, set you can? And just use it. Okay. I think. It's either I, here I, or chapter I 10. Familiar. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with, like, which items become available if you don't inherit them at all, because usually I just inherit mm -hmm. everything. I believe the rescue staff is chapter 10, though. Because, like, it's pretty common to not have anyone inherit it because it's kind of out of the way. Do you uh, pass it to someone in Gen 1? There's a castle up there, Sullivan. What are you doing? Eh, he doesn't see it. You can just skip that one? Yeah, we just skip it. I didn't know you can skip that one. I thought it was required <laughs> yeah, you to can open skip up the bridge <laughs> or whatever it is, this gate over here. Is this one? So, yeah, yeah, we're not going to be able to capture this castle, not because there's an enemy blocking the way, but because Sullivan doesn't have the mobility to reach it. No. Which would be one of those cases where if he didn't have to rescue Glitch, well, okay, he wouldn't be able to move infinitely, but like. If he was able to attack at the castle front, he'd be able to capture the same turn he kills the boss. Yeah. But he, he can't to, do that with Rescue Glitch. You have to walk all the way there, like, turn by turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, like, that's why we lose the turn here, because, like, there's no way for Selev to attack the boss and capture at the mm -hmm. same time, because he has to attack from above or to left. Rest in peace, Alterna. I don't know why you're tied to this castle. Uh, I have a game for you, Mecha. Do you want to count how many wyverns come out of this castle? <laughs> uh... That's gonna be. If you sped it up, I, can't, I won't be able to keep up. Wyvern counting game. <laughs> I, I think I always ask chat. I think it's like around 30. I don't remember off the top of my head. That's about right. It's four groups. So I think it's more like 40. Oh, yeah, that does look like 40. It's been a while since I've streamed this, so like I don't remember. It's like this run is about over a year old. Like, I think it was like the last time I speed on a Fire Emblem game before I like moved on to the 3DS games. I want to say each of the wyvern heads is 10, and then the big group is like 15 to 20 wyverns. <laughs> Not even. Oh, what a well guarded castle. Yeah. This... When, 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 when uh, Valk talked about how like there are like a lot of castles just aren't well guarded in this fearless review with you, I was like, oh, this is the castle that came to mind. <laughs> this is the chapter where like every castle is unguarded, basically. It's so yeah. sad. I, I like Yeet. that. There's like one boss that says, this castle is impenetrable, and it's just one general sitting on the castle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, so uh, remember how I mentioned at the end of Gen 1 that, like, Sigurd's money management ha is really tight. Yes. Like, Selef has to... Selef needs enough money to inherit the... To, not inherit. Get the Berserk Sword, because that's going to be really important for endgame. Um, and Selef also, when he, after this in inventory management, he needs to have as little money as possible. So if you notice that convenient 10k 65 gold that he has, I think the Berserk Sword is like 10k. Yep, 65 gold. 
Why is this important? Um, healing on the castle costs time and <laughs> gold. I didn't expect that. Yeah, so... The only thing I could come I tried up with to, was, like, turfing and uh, repairs, but that's so weird. Like, you don't have to care yeah. about that. It's just... It's, it's a really funny thing. Like, I tried to, like, change the menuing ordering for Sigurd's um, inventory management when setting up an inheritance, but it turned out to be slower because Self would get, like, two extra healing animations. Because whenever you're rescue glitching, he's still on the castle, technically. Which is why he's been constantly healing. And he kind of needs that healing really badly early on. But now that he's, like, promoted and stupid, he doesn't. It's just time loss. Why so we, he just needs to be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Are you stupid or something? Gosh, why don't you heal? Why so? Yeah, the healing enemies stupid? just aren't worth it. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. This is the you boss know the drill. Says, this is the boss that says, "I see no reason to rush." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, this guy just Thales just kind of moved like fifty tiles towards us. H help. Uh, they're gonna move towards Selaf. They do move. Yep. Yeah. They're and supposed to be on a child hunt, but I guess Selaf is technically still a child, so... Oh, those move too, that's right, because the castle got conquered. That's convenient. Yeah, the dark very convenient. Still had to take an extra turn, but, you know, it's one less enemy we have to kill. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then, and at this point, Selaf doesn't really need... Well, he did heal there, but he now he shouldn't heal anymore. Yeah, because... This... Yeah, Selaf's kind of ready for the rest of the run. It's like 50 gold per point of heal or something, or like turn... It's like some gold per point healed and then heal like up to some percentage of your HP, I think. Yeah, you so someone can find out on Sarans for us. I don't remember off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna go ahead. I one of my runs to like use church healing. I don't remember why. I think it might have been like a no arena run or something. Oh god. I, I, I legitimately loved arena in this game. It's just... I don't know why, it's just so satisfying to see a lot of it, especially the infantry units, just go ham. Mm -hmm. That's why people love the sword fighters, I think. Oh, it's a shame you weren't able to want to kill Hilda. Yeah. Oh well. If only Th you had a Crypt Brave Sword instead, you would have to be able to mm. skip that animation. Or this True. Or Crypt Silver Blade. Oh god, that sounds terrible, trading it up. <laughs> you just get Silver Blade so late. It has to be like I think we're actually not going to use the Silver Sword that much anymore. Coming up soon, but yep, that's two castles down, and we have two to capture. I mean, there's just not that many enemies left to fight. <laughs> yeah, there's not many. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm assuming you still still showing like this this dark bishop boss. We do. At least. We do. Yep. Like, what else do you use here? Oh, the pirate was so close to the castle, he just seized it when he was supposed to go for a village. That's cute. <laughs> yeah. So there's not many villages being burned either, so that's super convenient. Oh, nice. Yeet. Again, another hella unguarded castle. Welcome to Sigurd's Engage Paralog. Oh, yeah. Like, the movement here is, again, really tight, because we can't attack the boss from the front with the rescue glitch. But we have just enough movement to bonk him from above and still capture on the same turn, I think. Yeah, I, I was trying to see if we have enough move. And I was like, this is going to be very tight. Mm -hmm. Good job, Lana, on the RN burns. Very nice. Goodbye, Mr. You don't crit? What? Crit. Iron burning sucks, okay? Alright. Don't burn them. Fine. Just get your two <laughs> kill. I'm just glad you didn't get hit. Yeah, getting hit is actually kind of bad. Yeah. Or the boss coming up after this. Oh, Hi, Julius. I wonder Hi, which Julius. boss that is. Yeah, mm. by Julius. So, to totally not foreshadowed at all by three houses. Oh, I mean... I mean. Oh, yeah, the, the special enemies. Goodbye. Goodbye. I forgot how cool those paralogs are with the references. Mm, yeah, the, the Julius and Ishtar reference in the Engage paralog was hilarious. I, was, I noticed that I'm like, wait, that's totally Julius and Ishtar. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then the paralog just ended like two turns because Sigur just charged. But I think I think most people have had that experience. Save the kids. Yeah, so we did actually unlock Turfing because Sigur did talk to his dad in Chapter 5, which is required to unlock the Turfing, I believe. Uh -huh. You got the broken uh, sword. I never did anything with it. <laughs> but it's just repaired here, so like we just get to use it. He talks him from above. Instead of from the left. It, does that matter? I'm not sure if that matters. I feel like I've tried talking from the left, but maybe something ma matters. It's just closer. It's May like slightly less cursor movements. Yeah, it might be... I don't remember if I've looked into this or not. If I had to guess, maybe it has something to do with that green bishop moving to a different tile, but <laughs> I haven't. I don't know. That could be it. 
He does uh, like to move to heal you. All right. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, look at these stats. Ours is so <laughs> stats. This took like one hour for me to edit because it was terrible to screen to like crop this out. Uh, yeah. So we are going to. We have to go, go pierce through like his thirty percent chance to Pavis per hit. He's also incredibly dodgy, and he also two hit two shot Selif, and he's very tanky. We're gonna kill the. We're gonna commit a war crime and murder this priest here because he, we kind of don't want him healing Arvis. That's really bad. He's like fortify, right? Yeah. Oh, I guess you can. Yeah, yeah this is nice. You don't have to be. You don't have to get meteor because you have the turfing res bonus, so you have too much res. Yeah, we are intentionally gonna unequip the turfing for one turn to make a um, meteor sage try to meteor him to burn an RN. <laughs> These are mages, by the way. They're just called fire mages. Oh, they're just mages. Fire mages. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Sage is in this game, but they're like, they have the massive cloak and uh, the little antenna thing like things on their head. <laughs> I'm too used to the GBA games. Yeah, I get it. It's weird that it doesn't throw all promoted enemies at you. The, the little squad in the bottom left also has like armor knights instead of generals. Oh. And they're all, they're all just chilling while Arvis is getting smacked by Salif. Noodle arm Salif. Mm -hmm. Except not really. This is to be like one of the very few enemies you don't one round and then in Gen 2. We, we like five round KO him in the speedrun. <laughs> so like we just do not have the tools to handle him at all. You can't crit. He has no. We can't rig anything. You just have to fight him with raw stats. Almost any kind of challenge run can die to Arvis. Like he's like the big choke for uh, the solo runs as well. Like he just I believe 70 it. attack just Oko so many people. <laughs> like I, I believe it. I like I recently re listened to the tier list review with um P not peeved um Falcon, like half the time he mentions someone in Gen 2 is like, oh yeah, he helps with the Arvis fight. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah very good. You're seeing why you want that help in, an, in like an efficient setting, because Ooh. Like, yeah. This this is a rigged Selif with turfing, capped strength, a lot of capped stats, amazing skill, and he's taking like four or five turns to kill Arvis. He just saw you get two shots turns. with like great margins as well. Like even the castle healing is not gonna help him out here. It's yeah, it's, he's just so tanky, but like it's a speed run. We don't have anyone else trained, and the turns are pretty fast, so it's just not worth trying to bring anyone else to help out. Yeah, I'm amazed no one else moved. Like, not even, yeah, the it's convenient, it's super convenient. Final chapter, Last on the other map. hand. <laughs> yeah, this, this, is, this is a funny map. This is gonna go by hella fast. Oh, we have 2k gold. All right, goodbye, gold. <laughs> no, not my gold. <laughs> Alright, this chapter's all magical. I'm actually enemies. not sure what the barrier ring here is for. I don't remember off the top of my head. Oh, it can't be but... for all of because that's going to be one turn. Yeah. Um... So, the maybe, usual setup. Maybe to survive the boss at the end. Might be for some some degree of like AI manipulation. There's a little stab stabs near the end, it. but he has turfing, so like, who cares? Yeah. That's a good question. I'm actually okay. not sure. I'll try to figure it out. It's mostly going to be just... Stuff so walks up to a castle and seizes it. Like I don't remember any heavily guarded castles here. Nah, it's the wall yeah. that has a big <laughs> hole in it. Valk has a good. This is another one of those chapters where Valk's point about oh the castles aren't well guarded. Are yeah. What oh, one castle guard, but we can just bonk in Kanto and capture mm -hmm. on the same turn with the rescue glitch. Another non-crit. Although I guess you're using terrifying at this point. We're using terrifying. Yeah. yeah. This is, of, kinda good. this is one of those games where the HP bar going down costs time, right? So It does. I th I think it's like two two frames per HP in this game. I know like in Atelius and the GB games it's one frame per HP. I'm not sure about the games after that. Yeah, so if you get hit with turfing on by a magical enemy, it doesn't really matter that much because it's only like a single digit damage. Yeah, it, it's kind of whatever, yeah. This has to be the funniest castle in all of Gen 2. Just all axe guys. It's like about it's as strong as... feasting. All, look at all the, all the feasting for the sword kids. Yeah. Yeah, like about as like easy to dodge as like chapter one brigands, basically. <laughs> there's, there's like a guy with the health wall thin in there, though, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, the, those are the guys are like, all right, but like these guys with their hand axes, like, give me a break. Oh, the one, the one that sell is just sneaking past. Yeah. Silver sword, iron burning, I guess. Yeah. Still doesn't crit though. What the heck? Dude, RNG is like really tight. Setup is like really tight for this chapter coming up. I'm surprised if you wanted to take a hit here. I don't think Salif's health really matters, but maybe it does. I don't think so. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess, I, yeah okay, I see why it wouldn't matter. I was thinking he would have to take a hit against Julius, but he actually doesn't. And then Manfroy he's... has... Manfroy, you can just probably just dodge if you have to. 
One of the things I haven't mentioned is like a lot of times you kind of want to make sure that when we end turn, we end turn where the enemy phase will start. Yeah. So like, with and sometimes that switches. requires manual. Yeah, with the castle switches, sometimes we have to scroll the screen manually. Otherwise, again, we have to watch a game auto scroll it slowly, and that's really slow. So it's yeah. pretty much always faster to do it manually, and yeah. it's something that takes a little practice and we're remembering to do. I try to do it even casually because it's it saves a lot of scrolling. But it does. It's annoying because the castle switches are in like a certain order, and you just can't go backwards on them. You just have to go forward all the time. If yeah, it doesn't go backwards, and it retains like where you. It retains like the last time you've jumped to a castle. So like if you jump from castle one, two, three, stop, and then you put your cursor on one, it's gonna go to four. Yeah. Because the last time you jumped, castle jump was to two, three, so it's gonna jump to four, even if your cursor is on one or two. Yeah, it's way more annoying than unit switching in other games. It's kind of fast. I'm so glad for three houses and engage for making unit switching based off the map positioning instead of your unit list. Yeah. So nice. Oh, this castle looks uh, pretty well guarded. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. So we're doing some. I've tried experimenting with this to see if I can like skip fee or oi fee because they're gonna be doing some baiting. Um, and AI manipulation to try to get the dead lords out of the way, um, or elites or whatever they're called. Uh, I couldn't really find anything that was better than like what you see here, which I think was the original strat in the first place. It is neat. And yeah, the, 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 I think dread lords or dead lords. Elite is uh, the three houses guys with the crests. Oh yeah, the elites. Yeah, yeah, three houses. So yeah, now like most of them are. We want the Pegasus knights to go in a different direction, which is why Oifi is deployed. Very important Jagan rules. And now the Warlords don't see Fee as a reachable target, so they're going to go back east instead of continuing to go west. You mean Ishtar's group? Ishtar's group, yeah. Might be. So let's just switch weapons, didn't he? Uh, what did he switch to? He, he equipped a turfing. Oh, for... Hmm, what could that be for? I don't think Probably he's for... a meteor. Is he? Maybe he is. Yeah, he is, because the Julius's people are moving. Yeah. Yes. So it means you're in range of meteor. But that's how it works. Interesting. Okay. I think so. Oh yeah, that is some clever AI manipulation. I like it. Mm hmm. I, I I tried to find an improvement to this because it seemed a little slow, but it's still really clever, and I couldn't figure anything better mm -hmm. out. I especially wanted to try to cut out Oifi's deployment, but mm -hmm. getting getting the Pegasus Knights to go in that direction was really important. Yeah. So hey, we used the Berserk Sword. On this Hell Mage. Uh, I don't remember the exact odds of it activating, but it's really, really low, which is why it was a pain in the ass to try to find like a different strat for this, because the RNG is extremely tight to get this to work. Yeah, I think it's based off of like how high his resistance is, and it can underflow, I think, to be one really? of the I don't remember exactly huh. what that is. All right. But yeah, oh, here we go. <laughs> The Hell Mage is like, yo, I'm sick of this pay, pay cut that you've given me, so I'm going to give you some hell. Thanks for the leadership, sucker. Yeah, this also has to hit. So. Yeah. You only get yeah. one shot, because now Julius activates Wrath and just obliterates the guy. Bye. So, uh, for those not familiar with the cheese, the intended way to beat Julius is to capture the upper right castle, then talk to Julia, then have Julia go back to the upper right castle, get the Nagatome, then go down and bump Julius. That is incredibly slow. So using the Berserk Cheese to Berserk the Hellmage and reduce Julius's HP to 1 is way faster. Yes. And we just bonk him. And this is my find, by the way. Um, I'm using the Berserk Sword on him <laughs> because it activates Berserk, but that cancels out the uh, death animation of Loftier. And it saves about 8 seconds. What the heck? <laughs> so so like, Loftier is supposed to have an animation of dying right here, but it just doesn't happen because he activated Berserk on Julius, and that's faster. So... That, 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 that is my biggest contribution to this route, figuring this out, and I found it on accident. <laughs> I don't even remember the in-battle death animation. It, it's basically this animation, except in-battle, so it's pretty slow. Uh -huh. But this one still happens afterwards, right? Th this one still happens, yeah, unfortunately. Oh, I think it's pretty I epic, though. vaguely remember it, yeah. I miss Naga, but you know what? We'll take it. And we'll I think, take it. And Julius dying also like kills Manfroy and gets rid of all these enemies, I think. He gets rid of all the enemies, right. Um, and then that will be time when ca upon the last input of capturing. Um, for whatever reason, if you capture the last castle with the mountain, you know, the game can soft lock. Yep. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, thankfully, we end time upon the last input, so that doesn't matter. And we got Julia back. Yay. Yeah, we got Julia back. Hooray. 
Yep, yep, I'm explaining right there. Game can randomly softlock after the capture, but it's after the end, so it does not matter. So, yeah. hooray. I think it also like ruins your ranking if you use the uh, mounted Celeb to capture oh, the... Or if you, oh, if yeah, you no, it does bugs it out. Units, I think. It's very weird. It's, it's, it's janky. You know, that has other consequences. It's, <laughs> it's very janky. Yeah, yeah, I, I love this game to death, but it is a Super Nintendo game and very has a lot of glitchy shenanigans, as with most Super Nintendo games. So it do be like that. Jank makes it fun. So why, why it makes it, it fun. Why is it that speedruns always show like the whole credits and everything? Um, I personally show it because it just feels proper, I guess. It's, 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 it's I just feel like doing it because it feels like a proper end to it, I guess. It feels anticlimactic, just end the video right there, personally. Mm -hmm. But I mean, everyone kind of has their own way of doing stuff with like whatever they publish as well. It's like you don't have to include this in the speedrun if you don't want to. So I always see it in like tools as speedruns, especially they always do it. Mm, yeah, I, I don't task, so I, don't, I think some communities end their timing like after credits. I know it's just some oh, Japanese God. communities do that. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh, you do you, but ooh, yeah. I don't think I want to do that. Especially this one, I think, has slower text scroll as well, so it's really yeah, awful. This, this is really slow text scrolls. I think you can skip this, but I'm just letting it play out because it feels climatic, not yeah. anticlimactic. So. I think in FE4, it's one of those games where you can skip like one cutscene by pressing start, but then it goes to the next cutscene, or like goes to the next time that someone walks into the castle, like right here, these guys walk away, next guys, they can't skip this with start, and then they, these guys come in, and then they start talking, then you can press start again, and you can skip to the next guy, but... It, it just, just feels good. Why is it why why leaves on the screen? <laughs> True, one of them got some, one of the leaves decided to get um, a hair job with some blue hair. <laughs> So leaf and leaf. Well, one of them wants to become a Master Knight. The other one's already a Master Knight who can move infinite tiles. So. Mm -hmm. Reverse Gale Force. Reverse Gale Force, indeed. My god, I love that joke so much. I think someone in my chat named Z-Mistake made that joke, and I'm like, oh god, that is so perfect. I sometimes see people talking about their ROM hack concepts, and usually they will make something like... The, just like the three houses personal skills, where like the dude will get plus four defense for waiting around. It's kind of interesting to make wait... Give you an incentive to wait, if you know what I mean. Of attacking, or I do kind of like that as long as the incentive to do so is like pretty significant. Mm -hmm. And I, I, in some games, it works pretty well, in some games, not so much. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's like uh, Edu Guards plus four res when we're yeah. in Gen 2. That's like in, in, in part know. two, yeah, that plus four, plus four res is going to be really handy. I think the idea that would be pretty handy, that would be pretty handy if it was like on a bow unit in part one. Mm -hmm. but on a non-bow using it in a part two, not so much. I think the idea might have been okay, so you can like get an extra turn out of Amir and kill something with it, and then you can wait somewhere and kill a bunch of mages, but in practice you just kill everything with Amir and forget about the res bonus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Hi, I'm Daisy. Hi, I'm Daisy. Huh, love this game though. I mm -hmm. should do another casual playthrough of it, but... For sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely want to give it another again a shout out to like to other people who have worked on this game before, um, which I did early on. This is not my route. I have pointed out some of the things that I changes that I made, but the core route is not by me. I just kind of executed it. Um, but the run that you see today is still like a community effort from multiple people, including Mute, including Marsha, including Ghost Wheel, and the Japanese Hasser. So yeah, fun game. Um, four hours, eh, but. It's it's, a, it's it was kind of a pretty cool like once in a while kind of do do it like once per weekend kind of speed run I did last year, so and then like I executed it pretty well so I was pretty happy with this. Yes, and I do like our tradition of watching you speed run a game after I completed it in a let's play of some kind. Mm -hmm. The rescue glitching is also just incredibly fun. It was nice to have <laughs> I, an in depth like discussion of the rescue glitch because I never really get to show it off in my normal playthroughs. Yeah, before. it's 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 a really fun glitch, but it's also like okay, it's obviously really broken, but like it does have limitations to the point where you still have to work around those limitations, as you saw. Like again, it's reverse scale force, you can't move again after you attack, and you still need stats to beat bosses like Arvis. So like, you it's not just as trivial to just beat the game with it. You still have to figure out how to get the stats you need, how to unplug the castles because you're limited by your attack actions and so on. Yeah, so the, for reference, I think like the first five chapters is about two and a half hours long, and the latter seven is about one and a half hours long. So it's, just, so, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's that's why I said at the beginning, I think the route is the most important, uh, most interesting part of this run, because compared to other speedruns we've seen, because we, together we've watched like a lot of them already, 
and mm -hmm. I've seen a couple of others too. And this might be the game where like other units get like the most involvement almost <laughs> compared yeah, to honestly, even, even though it's, it's mostly a secret instead of stomp, it's still a lot of other units doing things. Yeah, honestly, like it, it, you can probably count on one hand like how many units do literally nothing. Like almost every unit in Gen One has done something, and like you don't really get as much character involvement as this. Besides, like Radiant Dawn, for example. Yeah, where Radiant Dawn is just kind of built that way. So like we, we like we saw Oifi do stuff. We saw Ratney get deployed, which is really funny. Yeah, I mean, this does mean that we have to count something like Lex goes out of the, the castle once to talk to Ira. <laughs> but yes, yeah, yeah, you take those. <laughs> Who didn't do anything? I mean, uh, the other Arden, Arden did nothing. Yeah, did he get warp cores? Right. For no reason. I don't think. I don't think he did. Mm. And then... Yeah, maybe Deer did stuff. Both archers did stuff. Tiltu killed one enemy. That she was kind of forced to kill anyways, but I guess we count that. He killed Beowulf. He fought. He fought one person, but it was Sigurd. Be Be Beowulf gave Sigurd experience, so I guess that counts. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I think that's I think it's just really Arden, and I guess Lex if you don't want to count that, that's mm -hmm. basically it. Mm -hmm. It's like everyone's used to some degree, so which is pretty cool. Yeah. And Gen two like isn't as diverse because you already have the rescue setup, but you still saw like Finn, Leaf, John, Jane, 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 John, whatever, do a few things. Emmett, who I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> Probably gets an entire region to his name now. Fee burned an RN for us. Good job, yeah, Fee. That's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, Fee also flew around for like one other thing, I think, at one point. Uh, I th oh, yeah, she did. Yeah, she in did on final? Endgame. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was baiting some enemies yeah. in the final. Oh, she was useful there. So, yeah, there's still, there was still a little bit of diversity in Gen 2 as well, despite having the rescue glitch online. So, it's a really cool route. Like, I, I like talking about this route a lot. Executing it, not as much, but. That's why I streamed it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fun it, to talk about the game. I think it, you've never talked to the original router, the Japanese guy. I've, I've never talked about it. I basically took the route, grabbed the route from Musu Mute's run because she had the previous record of like I think four hours flat, roughly, um, and her run was based off of Ghost Wheels run, which was basically who put in the effort to transcribe the Japanese run into English and to be human doable, basically. So. It was basically like translating a run into another run into another run into this, basically. <laughs> so. Collaboration. Collaboration. And I, I don't think any of us like directly collaborated on it, but it's more of a building more pieces on top of existing work kind of thing in this case. It's an assembly line, but in a fun way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, don't, 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 I don't think Meat likes this game. She. <laughs> I don't blame her for it, but yeah. Yeah, no, Mute sounds absolutely depressed on running this game <laughs> when Chapter 4 comes around. I do want to learn Thracia at some point, and she's, like, super excited, but because she's, like, the Thracia speedrunner. Yeah, but it's it's funny. You mentioned Ghost Wheel. At one point, I think I, I ran into Ghost Wheel on Smogon at one point recently for, like, playing Mafia. Oh, and, he's on Smogon? Interesting. Yeah, and he mentioned, like, oh, I does anyone know who speedruns this game or speedruns Thracia? I was like, I think Mute Mosu is, like, the best at it. And he's like, yeah, I taught her everything she knows. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, yeah. Ghost, Ghost Wheel did like a lot of your research behind Drain Astrasia Speedrun as well. Yeah. So Ghost Wheel is like, pretty based. Oh, yeah, all right. I've never really interacted with Ghost Wheel directly, but I, I can tell he's he's a cool guy. And mm -hmm. he's done a lot of he's done a lot of work for some of the older games. So definitely shout outs to him. He's chill. Very chill. I think there's one more person that has to go into the castle. Like, oh, V? Yeah. Is going. I didn't know she went last. That's weird. I thought Oifu would be last over. I, I never paid attention to this. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, and she just goes out right away. He just skipped it. <laughs> He's like, all right, feed I, I must have skipped it. Bye. Yeah. I think you were done. Oh, at this yeah. Point, which, I guess, which I guess means we're kind of done at this point as well. Because I think. Yeah, the, well, you can see the ranking, but yeah. It, I, think, I think it's bugged anyway, so it's not like it matters. Mm hmm. But. Yep. GG. GG. Well, it was fun to show this off and talk about it and ramble about fun stuff about genealogy. For sure. Or occasionally engage three houses, etc. whenever there's a chapter four other game playing. <laughs> yep. Or like, very telliest moment, I guess. Yeah, well the speed up was a good twist. I like that. It was good. Mm -hmm. I am so I am so glad I made this version. Like it's mm -hmm. just so much better to watch instead of the extra hour and a half of stuff, but Yep. It's nice. Alright. In that case I'm gonna call it here and not watch another seven minutes of text I cannot read. So <laughs> I don't blame you. Yep. 
thank you all for watching and uh, Kirby, thanks for joining. Yep, thanks for having me around. All Hope right. you all enjoyed. See you all next time.